Warning! What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Geek Pod. I'm your host, Paul. I'm Hugh. And I'm popping my peas. That's not good. Dude, that sounds like a personal problem. It is, but I always air my personal problems on the mic. <laughs> you do. Well, not all of them. Do good we have, point. Do we have to get you a big foam thing for the microphone? Well, we have a small one. I wonder if I can stretch over my big... <laughs> I, that's, that's not anything you've ever had to say in your life, is Never. It? Never. Um, Irish kid, sorry. <clears throat> so, Paul, where are we? We are in the basement of the Landmark Theater in Syracuse, New York. You know, that could be kind of creepy if tonight wasn't the zombie ball. That's still kind of creepy. Yeah, a little bit. But okay. There's cool people down here. Yes. Yes. And, and more to come, I'm assuming. Yeah, so uh, this year's zombie ball is being held at the Landmark, and, uh, you know, it's, I mean, things have technically started. It's a little quiet. I'm hoping that it picks up like it did two years ago when we were here. Yes. We were, we did not do the zombie ball last year. Uh, it was at Mogi. Mogi. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I've had two sips of that beer. That's not even a beer, dude. That's an apple cider. Right. That's, that's what I was feeling. It's kind of like having dinner at the same time. You know, I'm having my apples. Um, Mohegan Manor was where they had the, the zombie ball last year. And we were not there for that one. Just uh, didn't work out. Not a lot of space for... Well, from what I hear, we're probably glad because it, we would not have been able to record. No. But we may have had a good time. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, that's Where is that, anyway? I don't even know where that is. Baldwinsville. Baldwinsville. Or Where, where's that? The Beeville, as the kids say. There's too many Beevilles around here. I get them confused. There are more than one? Well, I mean, there's Baldwinsville. What's the other town that starts with a B? Baldwinsville. Baldwinsville, Brewerton. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at you. There, there's several towns in the local area that start with a B, and I always get confused for some reason. Does Binghamton count? Oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Sure. Why not? This isn't going anywhere, is it? Um, no, that's not my problem. <laughs> I wasn't even the, trying to do a bit. The nose um, on, the, on the mask is, is a little odd for me. Oh, yeah. Check my Facebook later. You're going to see an interesting picture of Paul. <laughs> um, well, it's the zombie ball, so I felt the need to dress up, as I guilted you into. Sort of. You you, you specifically do have a costume, right? I do. I do. In a, the most technical of senses. You're yeah. I put on a, a button-up shirt, open, and some wolf hands so that goes with your very wolf manish uh, well i'm yeah i'm look. hairy as fuck so I mean, yes. there's, you're not getting around that well that, that's part of the problem paul okay i actually agonized over this i mean i made it sound when i texted you like oh i'm not gonna bother dressing up somebody has to represent the brand and wear the geek pod t-shirt but you know i actually tried i've been thinking about it i was trying to figure out what can i possibly do and here's the issue number one i'm fat that makes it difficult to find find a costume once you've picked something out number two I have glasses, which means I can't wear masks. I'm not one of those people that can go without your glasses for a little while. I couldn't even sit here and podcast without my glasses. I would hit my face on the microphone. (laughs) It's just not going to work. The third problem is all of my hair. I have very long hair and a huge beard now. And while you can... Sometimes you don't want to dress up as something because maybe you don't look the part. But even if you go beyond that, this gets in the way of a lot of stuff. Right. So I... It's really challenging to figure something out. Now, the idea that you know I had about being a Jedi that probably would have worked if I could have found a rope, because that can look you know like whatever I want to. But no, this this was a uh, I really agonized over this, Paul. You do realize that if you would have started asking me these questions, you know, more than today, um, I have a full Jedi costume I could have loaned you. Is it gonna fit me? Um, it was made when I was eighty pounds heavier. Is it gonna fit me? I don't know. <laughs> I. I, I would how, think how heavy were you at your heaviest close to 300 all right well i've still got 50 pounds on you so really you carry it well dude my my normal weight is like 350 you carry it well then well thank you i guess <laughs> uh, yeah yeah basically saying, yeah you don't look that fat <laughs> uh, no nah, i kind of feel the same way i mean i, I gotta you know it's all in my belly really it's like a hard pack you know they, they, i mean it's not like i have fat arms or fat legs or anything like that it's just my flaps stomach. those are awful no no not really yeah, that's what i'm saying you, oh, yeah. you don't have the flaps yeah those are terrible but those would be cool because you could stretch them out attach them like up at the wrist and then fly away it doesn't work that way no? what if you shows. put like a stick from the elbow to the middle of the flap to hold it out kind of like the bones hurt. in a batwing skeleton 
No? I'm thinking that might be painful if you start jamming sticks into well, your fence. Well, of course it's going to be painful, but that's how you make progress. Is this the whole, i got to break a few eggs right now, <laughs> I think? Uh, anyway, so yeah, we are down here in the basement of the landmark, and hoping we're going to have a good night. Uh, we're going to have some drinks. We're uh, hopefully going to talk to a few people. I mean, worst case scenario, we sit here and talk to each other. Yes. Uh, which, you and know, actually get episodes out. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Considering, well, well, no, no, Paul, we get them recorded. You actually have to put them out for that to happen. Yeah, but here's the beauty of this. Very minimal editing, if it stays the way it is right now. It's not going to stay the way it is right now. Well, when people show up, good point. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's... Actually, you know what? You you brought a paper out. You had something that you won't let me see, and I don't know if you want to save this for later or not. Um, you can if you want. I wanted to save it for a WTF file, because it really is... Then you should probably flip it over. So, so I you stop looking yeah, at my, it. Yeah, my eye keeps wandering to the headline. You got a wandering so. eye? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm developing ticks. I'm catching them from my daughter. Oh, no. <clears throat> um, but, no, I mean, there's a lot of things to talk about. I mean, we, we really haven't sat down and been able to talk about geek things uh, for, you know, since January on that, that episode that wasn't actually ever released. Um, and a lot of things have changed. A lot of stuff has happened, um, especially, you know, as we went into the new TV season. There's been a lot of change in comic books and things like that. So if we want to completely geek out, there's a ton of stuff we can talk about tonight. I'm and, down. I mean, we might even, even be able to make this a regular-ish ish episode so yeah. I'm assuming you didn't bring news and all that no I didn't bring news but I do have some stuff right so I mean some things I wanted to talk about um, but yeah you know we'll have to actually organize those during a break because I'm not prepared to run into something like that yet works for me um, so how about you what are your thoughts well I mean one of the things that I mean we started discussing this on the episode that hopefully goes out before this which would be the Syracuse New York Comic Con episode um, and we were discussing the cancellation of Iron Fist. Yeah, more cancellations. I, I have a feeling that those are go- they're they're eliminating them one by one. It, it sounds like it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of conjecture out there that maybe they're looking to do a uh, Heroes for Hire, uh, which, if Netflix is actually going to do that. It makes no sense to leave the fans hanging like this. Mm-hmm. Now they did say that we would be seeing Iron Fist again, which is. Which is telling, because the show that we thought he could appear on has been canceled, Luke Cage. Um, Daredevil Season 3 just came out, and he wasn't... I don't think he was in that. I haven't watched it yet. Um, So I have to assume that means that they are intending on making some other Marvel TV show. Um, But the smart thing here would have been to announce the cancellations together and say that we're going to move forward with Heroes for Hire. Now they're they're creating um, animosity in their fan base, they're creating a lot of confusion, and... I honestly cannot think, from a marketing perspective at least, any reason to hold off on that announcement unless they, they that wasn't the plan. So I have to wonder where are, they, where are we going to see that character again? Where are we going to see them pop up? Right, but they have said that there is a season three of Jessica Jones, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I thought I read something about that where they said that was still a thing. That would make me happy because I would really hate, yeah, to be honest with you, I could uh, live with losing both Iron Fist and, and Luke Cage. Uh, it's really Daredevil and Jessica Jones that I like. And I, I can't imagine... I, I don't see them pulling... Definitely not pulling Jessica Jones into the uh, larger MCU. Right. It doesn't um, really have a space for it yeah. the way that show is. No, into the larger MCU. The cinematic right. universe. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I could see them um, pulling Daredevil. I mean, especially after all this established backstory and with a lot of... Um, movement of characters, you know, retiring, you know, actors who don't want to play those characters anymore. Um, they're going to need some new blood. They're going to have to bring some people up from the minor leagues, as it were. And, I mean, out of everything Netflix is giving us, uh, it's a no-brainer. You know, m- maybe make a season four if they're working on it, and then, you know, Daredevil after Avengers 4 should be one of the big characters. There's no reason not to do that. Right, That would, and, and I would be very cool with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, no, because it sort of takes place in the same universe. They don't have to rejig or anything. They don't have to change any backstory. They just have to have them there. And that's one of the things about the big ensemble movies is that they don't always move any individual character stories forward. We have had a little of that with like Civil War and st- some of that, but it's not necessary. You know, if you look at like the, the last one, Infinity Wars, that didn't move individual character stories forward. It moved the universe's stories forward. And those big tent poles, like, you know, the, the Avengers movies, that's really what they're there for. Right. They're just they're the big action movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I can I can definitely see them them pulling him, but yeah, they're not gonna pull Jessica Jones. 
No, it, it just doesn't fit with the bigger story. Unless they bring her into Captain Marvel. That'd be kind of cool. That could be interesting. <laughs> um, well, it would have to be Captain Marvel, too, because the first one takes place in the past, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, there's been some interesting stuff in her current comic with Captain Marvel, so they definitely have a, an interesting friendship. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah, I'm kind of wondering. I mean, it, it almost... It, the Marvel Universe has been on a roll lately. Big Netflix shows, big movies, big shows on other networks, and mm-hmm. one has to wonder, are we finally seeing the first dominoes to fall? It certainly doesn't seem like it if you look at the money that the movie series is bringing in. Right. Series and series? Series. Which one's the word? I don't know. Um, they're definitely not slowing down there. We haven't reached uh, that superhero fatigue that we read about every single time oh, a new movie it. comes out and then it breaks records and, you know, shut up. Right. <laughs> USA Today. Uh, that doesn't seem to be happening, um, but it's, I mean, this is the first, I mean, this is the first really big, really big loss we've had in almost a 10 year span. If you think about it. Yeah, because, I mean, we had the, you know, the, the potential, of, what, the last two seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. saying, well, this might be it, this is it. But it's still going. Yes. And, and now, as I understand it, it's not coming back until next summer after Avengers 4 comes yeah. out, and it's going to be a reduced Yes, it's going to be a reduced episodes. episode count, but um, uh, the guy running ABC, I want to say his name is David Pedowitz, but I could be completely off on that. Um, that might be the, actually the guy that runs CW. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the person basically, one of the people in charge of all this has said that they are not averse to the idea of having Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. continue in a smaller format, maybe in an event format. I, I think the idea was that they don't want to tie up an entire regular season of, you know, because, I mean, they, they have they have to fill space. You know, networks have to fill space. And there are prime spots, you know, 20 to 23 episodes. That's where they're going to make the most money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they want to tie that up with 22 episodes up with something that isn't pulling in as big of ratings. But the thing about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is that its audience is consistent. Right. And they would rather take a smaller sp- a slot, a summer slot, someplace where, you know, whatever you put there isn't going to do great because they know those people are going to come back to watch that. So it's almost like a, you know, a win-win situation. It's kind of like what um, CW has going on with Supernatural. No matter where they put that show, it consistently has the, the same people come back and watch it every week. Right. The audience is following, yeah. regardless. And, and a lot of shows can't do that. I mean, if you look at uh, Friday night has traditionally been you know, the death slot for a lot of shows, and that's where they put them when they go to die. But I mean, I'm pretty sure Supernatural has hit Friday night. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has hit Friday night. Um, when you put a show on Friday night and it keeps its audience, mm-hmm. uh, if nothing else, that's guaranteed money. And you want to put something brand new in there, you have no idea if, it, if it's What's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it make the safe bet. And I think that's what they're doing. They're not going to uh, close that door because it's consistent. Right. But and I think the way people are consuming television now is different, too. So oh, I don't absolutely. know if, if a Friday night slot really makes a difference if it's a show that's already established anyway. This is true. This is true. I, I think one of the best examples of our changing viewing habits is if you've paid attention to any ratings news over the past four weeks, you, you've seen that you know everyone's talking about how The Walking Dead, the ratings have dropped through the floor. Uh, you know, lowest ratings since season one. You know what's happening when the Live Plus 7 v- views come out? What's that? It's going up to like, you know, eight, nine million viewers, lower than it has been in the past, far higher than the, the 1.96 million that they said that it was getting. Right. You also have to take into account that AMC has its own streaming app now. A lot of those aren't taken into account. A lot of ratings are going there. Another thing that's not being taken into account as well is, and we don't even think about this, okay? Give us some thought. You have a TV show, you make a season of that, and you make all the money from all your ratings, your advertising. And then you put it on Netflix. You make money there, too. Mm-hmm. Now, how many people do you think only watch The Walking Dead on Netflix? They wait for the whole season to come out. Right, so they can binge it. Yeah, Lana doesn't have... My, my daughter, Lana, her, her family, I don't think they have cable anymore. They watch everything on Netflix and Hulu. Those aren't taken into account. Right. So if, if you look at the actual final figures, for instance, The Walking Dead, the past few weeks, it's coming in as the second highest rated show behind This Is Us, which is a... Juggernaut. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, my wife watches it. It seems like a really sad show about people who die. 
or have died years past. <laughs> yeah, but they're still on the show. I, I yeah. can't. I, I walk in, I see a guy from Heroes. I'm like, didn't he die? It was all over the news that he died. She's like, yeah, but this is in the past. I'm like, what the? F-? And you say the shit I watch is weird. <laughs> right. And I, I got to tell you, that's the only episode I watched was after the Super Bowl when they did the How Did Peter Petrelli Die? Yeah. Of Heroes. I, no, or, um, this is us. of that. Of the, this is us, and it was just because I was sitting there on my phone and I looked up. I'm like, oh, this is that show. Oh, they're gonna kill him tonight. Because I mean, they literally it was everywhere that that was the episode. So I was like, I'm kind of a sick fuck. I'll I'll, I'll watch this one episode to see how this guy dies. Did you understand anything that you saw? Um, I understood that he died. Okay. And then, how he died. There we go. I guess that's all I needed. Yeah, it's I, I really wanted him to take somebody else's powers, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> Wrong show. So Paul. I was disappointed, and I refused to watch it again because he didn't have any powers. Uh, but you know, this just goes to show we are consuming media differently. We're consuming, uh, I mean, everything from books, music, um, movies, television, is all being consumed in different ways than than have that has been in the past. And so you have to look at, okay, you know, the overnight figures from Walking Dead, maybe they're low. Is that still enough of a, a draw on Netflix? Of course it is. Right. And, and AMC is losing viewers to their own application, which I'm sure they make bank on. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's set up. I mean, they probably make more money per viewer on the app than they do in the regular Nielsen's. I um, believe it. So, yeah, I mean, they're, people are saying, oh, they, they just said they have a 10-year plan for that universe. Of course they do, because right. it's doing fantastic. 10-year plan. 10-year plan. Money. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what you have to figure is, okay, once all the, the DVR viewers are figured in, close to 9 million viewers, okay, makes it number two. Who knows how many people are on the app and who knows what they make from Netflix. That's a healthy show. It's fine. Has it lost some, some viewers? Absolutely. Oh, they, they knew it was going to lose viewers though. The moment they said that that Rick Grimes was going away. Well, no, they. But I don't think they, I don't think they've lost. They haven't lost any from that yet. They could lose them when it happens. I mean, I, I think a lot of people. Honestly, it's it was it was Glenn, uh, my former mother-in-law. Um, so when we have like um, family, well, I don't go to family get-togethers, like birthday parties for my older kids or whatever. When I'm right. over there, uh, her and I talk about TV. We get along really well, and. Uh, she was into The Walking Dead for a while, so it gave us something to watch. And then she says, yeah, I stopped watching after they killed Glenn. That was just awful and, and disgusting. And, and I, I don't know if she started watching again, but I had a talk with her. I'm like, listen, the reason they did that is because that's how it happened in the comic. And she goes, but the eye popping. I'm like, yeah, that's actually a panel from the book. She's like, really? And I, and I explained to her, I'm like, the reason for this is they built up a character. They made us love that character. And your reaction proves that they did a good job right and, and that's what drama is supposed to do and things don't always end nicely um if it had been a character you didn't care about then it would have no impact right and i said you know don't don't let this one thing because it hurt you stop you from watching a great show because it was supposed to hurt you yes um but yeah they probably lost a lot of people there maybe some of them came back uh, i know that a lot of people thought that uh, the last season was kind of a drag because people they said people were tired of negan i don't know i mean oh my I, god i love negan i, I would still I would, love negan. i'd watch jeffrey dean morgan paint a wall <laughs> as long as he talked occasionally i mean the man's amazing uh, yeah i thought it was great um, but it doesn't matter i mean every single show is going to plateau if your show plateaus after nine years at the number two rated show on television you've got nothing to worry about you're right yeah i think you're all right so yeah, they're 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 doing fine, um, I, and I'm betting you're going to get a lot of people back once um, uh, Norman Reedus becomes the lead of the show. You might you might lose some Andrew Lincoln uh, fans, but you're going to gain Norman Reedus fans. Yeah, I'm just curious as how they're going to do it. Are, Are they going to kill up on him the show? Off? Yes, I think I think we watched the news. I've seen some conjecture about. Uh, that they, we've already seen it, like in some of the previews, there's a walker that looks like it's wearing Rick's boots, and all, all you can see is the boots. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, you know, the thing that gets me is, you remember um, about a year ago, we did an episode, and I talked about the hero's journey and how they had damaged Rick Grimes' character so much that I didn't feel like they could ever redeem it. The yes, funny thing is, is they've actually managed to do that in the last four episodes. They've actually turned him into what he was supposed to be and actually i i didn't care when they first announced he was leaving i'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i mean I, I didn't want it to happen but i was like it really doesn't matter um now i'm kind of like oh, you know they, they finally got it right and they're getting rid of it's time for him to go yeah. yeah it certainly seems like they're going to be pushing um you know or at least right now it looks like you know daryl might be involved in that and what yeah. has me wondering is 
if that's the case, how do they make him the hero of the show? Right. I, I, and that's why I think it's a swerve. Yeah. But they're definitely making it look like Daryl's going to do something. Because we're getting the fist fight again. Yeah. Didn't we get that like three seasons yeah. ago? That was last season, actually. Was it last season? It was a great fist fight, though. <laughs> but yeah, that was okay, something I was going to bring up, because we haven't, you know, since we haven't been together in a while. Um, Not like that. Th- th- nobody was thinking that. Okay. Yes, they were. Maybe some people were thinking that. Laura was thinking that. No, I don't think Laura was thinking yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Um, She's a freak. I mean, this is the Black Canary we're talking about. Uh, you know, you guys brought that. I, I saw that brought up in Facebook. And that's just it. If she wouldn't have mentioned it on Facebook, I never would have brought it up. So it's all your fault, Laura. That's what she gets for not being here. How dare she <laughs> vacation? You know, honestly, I don't thing. even remember what that was all about. The, the bird in the ass. Yeah. yeah. We had the discussion sitting right here. I know. Okay. I've, I've actually discovered something, Paul. And this might be a... Some of our listeners might uh, be interested to hear this. We're going to delve into my personal life a little bit here. Um, I struggle with my memory. I have a hard time remembering things. I remember being here. When you bring up Black Canary, I remember there was something about Black Canary. Uh, but my wife and I have been talking about it. And, like, I don't remember holding any of my three children for the first time. Wow. I don't really remember getting married. I mean, I know I was there. I know it happened. But it wasn't because I was drinking. And, and I've been thinking about this because it's been a really... I know things happen. I think that there, there's a problem in my brain where emotion or weight is not attached to memories at all. It's not that I don't feel. It's not that I don't feel good about you know my daughter being born. But it, 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 usually when you recall things, I mean, you, think about it. Things that are most important to you are the things that have the most weight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my wife was talking last night about how when she thinks about the cruise she, we went on, or the two cruises, she gets a feeling of happiness, and then she gets a feeling of you know kind of sadness because she wants to do it again. When I think about it, I'm like, yeah, we did that. That was cool. Yeah, that was cool. But I, I'm not a sociopath. I'm not. It's not a matter of oh, I had no feeling. I, when I was there, I enjoyed it. It's almost like my brain only lives in the moment, so it makes me hard or makes it hard for me to recall things because once I'm past it, it's not really important anymore. I hear if that you. makes sense. It does. Uh, and, you know, my, my wife has always been like, why do you have such a hard time with your memory? I mean, I don't smoke weed. I don't do drugs. I barely drink these days. Um, and I, I don't know what it is. See, I so, can pinpoint what my problem is. Yeah? Yeah. Concussions. What? Oh, concussions? Huh? Yes. Yeah, I don't really have those either. But yeah. I've been trying to figure it out. And we, we discovered it because we were talking about memories in the past. And, and I, I just I thought it was weird that I don't remember... You know, my daughter's being born, or when I held them for the first time. I mean, I know that it happened. I know that it was a big deal when it happened, but I can't recall how I felt or any detail of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really weird. It or may, may, weird. May, maybe we'll we'll get deeper. I mean, I don't have insurance, you know, so I, I can't really go get looked at. And it doesn't really <laughs> interfere with my day to day life. Like I said, it's not like a sociopath thing where I, I don't have emotion. I just think that. Emotions aren't getting attached to memories properly, so I have a hard time recalling them. Does that, does that make sense? It does. Okay. To me, at least. And I don't know if that should make you more worried. Or... I don't know. I, my, Damara had a hard time really understanding because she was equating it with there's no emotion, so you didn't feel it, and it's not important. And that's not the thing. Right. It's, I mean, we're, we're, we're actually talking about the filing system in my head. You know, it, it's completely neutral, and it has nothing to do with how I feel about things. Right. It's uh, like you're taking it out and just looking at a photocopy of it. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh yeah, I did that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. But you you want to ask me what you asked me what I felt about that during that time at that point? I. I think I was excited. And sometimes I can look at it and I'm like, oh, that happened because I mean there'll be things that something. What was it last night? It was some big thing, and I would have sworn to, to my wife that no, that didn't. I didn't. I don't remember it, but it, it was a big deal. I should remember it. Right. I don't remember what it was now, though. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I, I would love to be able to remember, though, because it was a good example. It, it was just so strange. And so, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm currently trying to go through some journey to figure out what that's all about. I mean, because it, it doesn't really impact me. I can remember the stuff I need to do my job. I can sort of... Well, a good example. Um, birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. Um, thank God for Facebook. <laughs> and, you know, I have a, a, in my wife's contact on my phone, I have all the important dates saved. Um, some people would say, well, you know, you don't care about it enough to commit it to memory. Well, if I'm having trouble attaching emotions to memories, then that, that would be really tough. I have a, a 
really hard time recalling that stuff. So I have to set. I have a system of alarms and all this stuff to make sure I don't forget any important dates. Yeah, I do the yeah. same thing for birthdays and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you're you're talking about like birthdays for friends and stuff. Do you have to do that for your kids? Yes, oh, I have okay. I have them in my calendar. Okay. With a reminder. All right, that's good. So I'm not alone. No. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, it's hard. But you know, she's like you know after a. You know, nine years, she's like, you know, you think you'd be able to remember these dates. I'm like, I'm trying. Right. <laughs> I'm really, really freaking trying. Uh, but anyway, enough about me. Are you sure? You're just saying that because you don't have anything else to talk about. Oh, no, we have more to talk about. Okay. I mean, we haven't even, like, broached, like, what's happening in the world of comic books or... Do you even read, bro? <laughs> Do you even comics, bro? <laughs> um, I'm still purchasing them. Does yeah. that count? I suppose. I don't suppose you picked up Immortal Hulk, did you? Number one. No. I didn't even I know it came out. I totally was going to ask you to pick that up for me. Mm. I wish I had. Is that when Banner came back? Uh, yeah, but uh, Immortal Hulk, the, the series, I mean, holy crap, you need to read it. Uh, yeah. What, they, what they've done is they've taken Hulk back to some of his roots. He's a, It's more of a gothic horror story. Really? Yes. And the idea is Banner is there during the day. Hulk comes out at night. Hulk now, um, he can talk. In fact, Banner says he's really the brains now um, because he's not talking like Banner does, like very articulately. But what he basically can do is is he can sense the evil in men. And at night, he hunts them down and finds them. Interesting. And the idea is that, you know, because of what happened with him, you know, he died. Well, he didn't really die. You know, Banner always comes back because Hulk, oh, Hulk is technically immortal. And, yeah, they've had it now. You know, Banner's been shot and dead when the moon or when the sun sets, Hulk comes out. Really? So, so it, it's a really cool twist on the character, something I, I don't... It harkens back to things they've done in the past, but it isn't a, a carbon copy of things they've done in the past. And I have to say, I, I've never been a, a Hulk fan. I mean, he's a one-note character. Right. They, they've managed to you know, put the gothic horror spin on it, um, the, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde spin, and it's interesting now. Really? Really. Like it, it's, it's almost like Hulk by way of Ghost Rider. You know, he can see the evil in men's souls. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's super cool. And how are they explaining that? Like, is it now since his last resurrection with the Hawkeye thing? or I, I guess so. It hasn't really been explained. Uh, I mean, they're only, what, six, seven issues in. And, no kidding. Um, I mean, it's it, they're still establishing themselves. And, and I'll be on, to be honest with you, they you know brought the Avengers in, I think, two um, issues ago. He's facing them. They're trying to find a way to capture him or whatever. It, that was too soon. They really needed to go a full year without, you know, the, having the, the superhero Hearing community at large. Catch. Yeah. Um, but in the, at the end of the last issue, um, they managed to catch him, and uh, the, whoever is, like, in charge of the, the the people who are trying to catch the Hulk, at the last page is the Hulk cut all up into pieces and jars. They put him in separate jars, and his eyes are open. He's still alive. Like, you cannot kill him. He is immortal. Wow. It's, it's crazy. Some crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, that sounds kind of creepy. Uh, but it's definitely uh, worth taking a look at. I, I'm a little concerned with the uh, now that they're introducing the world at large that it, it's going to become the same old stuff that it always was. Yeah. Which I, I'd like to not see that, but you know, hopefully they'll they'll bring it back to smaller stories. Uh, I think that the the writers found a way to use a larger than life character in smaller stories, which is really impactful. Yeah. And that's kind of something they needed to be able to figure out with Hulk because, like you said, it's it's like a one note character. I mean, he's Hulk smash. Yeah. Or you bring it back to Smart Hulk, and then it's really not. And nobody Hulk. wants to see that. Yeah. Like somebody we uh, we know said two weeks ago. You're drawing a blank. Yeah. You have that memory problem too. No. no. Uh, but uh, but yeah. See, I'm trying to think. Anything else interesting? Comics. I mean, nothing. Nothing jumps out at me. I mean, that's really been the uh, the standout for me. Uh, the past few months. Uh, I mean, there have been a lot of other big events, you know, the return of Wolverine, the relaunch of Amazing Spider-Man. The Fantastic um, Four are back. It, it, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, it, they're coming up on issue three, and maybe they'll actually be back. They, they have kind of been getting there. Uh, I've been reading that, but you know what kills me is that I don't know if it really matters. I mean, I think they need the, the characters in the universe itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that you can actually tell a story with those characters that hasn't already been told. And you have to think, and they go way back. Yeah. They're, I mean, older than Spider-Man, <clears throat> crying out loud. Yes, 1962. Uh, they, uh, they've done everything. And they've also tried to reinvent everything 
more times than you can possibly count. Uh, not having them in the universe was kind of refreshing because, you know, at least two of the characters, uh, Ben Grimm and uh, Johnny Storm, get to do other things, which they right. hadn't been able to do. Uh, I'm a little concerned that, yeah, they're, they're bringing them back for sales for uh, people to be excited about, but I don't know what you do with them after that, beyond going back to the same old stuff you've always done. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because I mean, when they went away, weren't they off trying to find... They were recreating so, the multiverse. That's what it was. Which, you know, what's messed up is that part of what's happening with them coming back, they and they basically all these the multiverse worlds they've created are all being destroyed one by one, and they're going back through all the worlds they created to try to escape. And it's kind of like basically the whole time they've been gone is being erased. <laughs> so <laughs> there's almost no point to it. So is it almost like a less Jedi thing? They're just undoing everything they've done? The they aren't. Um, somebody else is. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a last Jedi thing. But you know what? I've heard people use that phrase, it's a last Jedi thing, uh, in uh, conjunction with three different things recently that were completely really? unrelated. See, and I have clever. no idea what, they're, what they mean by that. Um, I know a lot of people hate that movie. I watched it. I thought it was great. I don't understand what the problem is. I, I really don't get it. Maybe you can explain that to me, you know, when we come back from break. <laughs> Are you telling me that's where we're, we're going to break now? Well, no, I just figured we're, we're going to take a break here eventually, so... All right. I mean, are we going to try and keep these manageable episodes? Because we're actually a half an hour in already. I don't. Do you need them manageable? I don't know, Paul. I, I don't know. That, dude, that's there's nobody th- here. We're just doing whatever we want. So. Good point. <laughs> um, but I just didn't know if we were going to do, like, previously, and just do a bunch of short episodes, yeah, or if sure. we're going to try and do a real episode. Well, I, I mean, we can try. Well, this was supposed to be our pre-roll. This was <laughs> Okay. <laughs> We're out of beer, so that's a problem. Uh, yes. That is a problem. So I say we wrap this episode up. This okay. is a half an hour episode in. All right. Or should we call it we're actually, you know, taking a break and then we can drop in, you know, ads or I promos think or whatever. you're thinking about it way too much. We're going to do whatever we want to. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> um, all right. Um, we'll be back. Yeah. Paul, hit the stop button. Just hit this. Hit it. Hit the stop button. Come on, do it. You can do it. Hit the stop button. And we are back. Yes, we are, but apparently a few moments too late. Oh, always <laughs> the case with me. Uh, so we uh, took a break. We went upstairs. Uh, things are starting to fill up right now. Um, hopefully it's going to get busier. Uh, there's not a whole lot happening down here in the basement. And honestly, oh, I see Batgirl. That's awesome. Yes, beat up uh, Batgirl. Uh, what? No, I'm not telling you to beat her up. She, looks, she looks like she's been beat up. There's, there's blood and cuts. Cuts and not blood and guts. That's an awesome costume. It is. I'm going to ruin this for you now. Madison had that same costume. Really? Yeah. In that size? Probably pretty close. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. How? Well, the size was a sarcasm. But, oh, okay. But no, like the exact same style. Oh, okay. Costume, yes. um, but yeah, and, 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 we need a little more uh, business down here. I want to see the, the psychic ladies who, uh, by the way, just fed us. That was awesome. Yes. Um, some amazing homemade uh, bacon mac and cheese and a uh, slice of pizza. Yeah, they kept saying, hey, you guys want food, and you know, we were recording and stuff, so we finally got over there. They're so nice. They offered they us food before, too. Twice now. Yes. Yeah, twice. Now, do you know what's missing this year that wasn't here the last time? That was here the last time? Andrew. Well, that's not what I meant. Laura. Yeah, that too. Laura? Oh, she's not here? But that's not it either? Oh, potential infidelity. Not for us. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Inside oh, joke. Wow. Yeah, that, there are going to be some very angry people with that. I know. Okay. Come on. I love it. Oh, trust me, I'm not discouraged. <laughs> no, no. What is in here? Oh, the uh, the escape, the escape room. room. Yes. But we didn't get on mic at the con, unfortunately. You know, I feel like we, we missed a lot of what we wanted to do there. We didn't get John. Did you by the way? Did you talk to John before you were done and say sorry we didn't get get around to interviewing you? Yeah, and I told him it was all your fault that you did not want to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. No, I did not get a chance to talk to him. By the time we wrapped up our stuff, he was packing up and he was peacing out. Uh, see, he was actually supposed to be at Wizarding uh, Weekend uh, tomorrow, but he had to cancel, I guess, for some reason. But I was actually hoping to uh, touch base with him. Uh, John, if you listen to this, or if anyone, <laughs> yeah, like anybody listens to our podcast who also knows him, other than me. <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, JG, i really sorry we didn't get to talk to you at the convention. I really wanted to. I ended up having to leave early, which kind of uh, put the kibosh on stuff. I'm still not blaming you for that. Like, that was a full, really good episode. It, it was. It was. I mean, for 
I mean, I'm sure people listened to the one before, but I mean, that would it be telling Steve Dave? What would it be with just Brian uh, and Mike? Nothing. Nothing. Like, that's not a thing. Okay, but okay, so it turned into an episode of Comic Book Men. I mean, they took over the Geek Pod mics and um, ran the show. And I was so okay with that. Yeah, it was amazing. I, I, I basically felt like I got to sit down like and personally watch an, an episode of Tell Him Steve Dave. Yeah. I was very, very, very... But, it, but it's our show. We're going to put that out. And it's our show. It's Geek Pod. And they were on it. And it was awesome. I mean, honestly, because my whole thing was, you know, I, I, I said to my wife, we're going to get 10 minutes with these guys. I mean, they're the big soul yeah, yeah, 10 minutes. You know, they're going to fulfill their contractual obligation. And then they're going to go back to their table and make money. Over an hour later, my wife is texting me. And I'm like, I have to go. I just could not believe that it <laughs> turned into, you know... That you had to end it on us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You said you weren't mad at me about that. I'm not. And you know why I'm not mad? Why? Because we fucking hung out with him all day. Yeah. All it was, day. It was awesome. Yeah. Not just him. We hung out with Mike, too. I talked comics with Mike after you left. Oh, good, good. Uh, I, I felt yeah. like we were kind of leaving him out, and that wasn't yeah. intentional. No, and I blame Bri for that. <laughs> That's where I'm going with. We did get that second drink, by the way, after you left. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he... I don't know what it was. He, he seemed like he, he took to us, so he kept... He approached us a lot of times, or just... Waved we, us over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it, we, we kept trying to get to Mike, but Mike was busy, and Brian was like, hey, <laughs> right. here, so... And I, I'm not saying this in any kind of, like, disparaging way, but Mike was doing his job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, like I said, I, I think it was the beer. I think that's the reason he, he yeah. took a liking to us. It was my beard. Your beard. <laughs> Mine specifically. Well, he saw the beard and he's like, oh, dude, this is one of my people. <laughs> the guy that doesn't listen to their show. Oh, yeah. People. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, you don't necessarily have to be into something to be the kind of no, people. Especially when he started you know, bringing up the serial killers. You know, I knew oh, that. Yeah. Yes, I didn't that's know it. that was a thing for him. I, I wish we would have had more time. I could have debriefed you on that. Yeah, Very because I, I would have come a lot more prepared than, you know, than I did. Right. Because I could have. Yeah. Horror is his thing. Like, he's really into you, you, horror. We, we did that whole thing, and you didn't... Oh, man. Yeah. That's... You didn't even get to see his tattoo, did you? On his arm? I know you saw the one on his back. I saw the one on his back. I told my <laughs> wife about that, and she thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, no, the, his forearm. He has a, a tattoo of Zombie Sage. His, his oh, daughter really? on a tricycle with a TSD shirt on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Had it done during comic book man. All of a sudden, I get really quiet, and I feel like I'm shouting. Yeah, that's because there's not a lot going on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, we had a blast, and it was um, it was awesome to actually sit down and not just do an interview, not just do a segment, but do a real whole podcast with a yeah, with legitimate celebrities. That was cool. And it was like we were old friends. Everyone yeah. was hanging out, making really bad jokes about people we don't know. Yeah. I do feel like we probably should issue an apology, but I'm not going to do it. Actually, I think maybe once this goes out, we should <laughs> do a separate. Sure. I'm sorry, episode. <laughs> I, just just I, it, basically so that we can squeeze as much mileage out of this one celebrity pair of parents <laughs> that we had as we possibly can. Yes, I have no shame. Um, <laughs> well, me either. Clearly, do, 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 look where we are. <laughs> right. Not literally where we are right now, but where Geek Pod is. Yeah. No shame at all. We'll take whatever we can get. That's right. <laughs> uh, by the way, next weekend we will be um, podcasting from the Swap Meet. On the south. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I was. I was going to say, wait, I thought this was it for the year. I was done. <laughs> Obligations have been met. I actually, th- actually, I thought that the uh, convention was, and then you said to me, how, how long ago did you say? You, it was Monday. Monday. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah. So we're going to be at the zombie ball. Yeah, by, like, the, oh. by the way, Josh got back to us. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh. You know, I actually thought that my wife was going to yell at me. And not that she yells at me about doing Geek Pod stuff, but Friday night is my night with the kids. And, right. You know, we do stuff. I thought I was going to um, get a ration of shit um, for that. And she's like, oh, okay. I, I would have expected it, and I would have understood if you said, I can't do it. I was already trying to come up with backup plans, just uh-huh. in case. Because my situation I'm just going to do it anyway <laughs> yeah um, that's that's why you are the superhero code guy and I'm the <laughs> shit bag in yeah. this group I know so everyone knows they should know I mean we've we've highly established this at this point um, but no she was cool about it and uh, she just said remember you know you can't be uh, hungover and grumpy tomorrow so that's probably fair. should cut me off around 12 beers around 12 are you sure around 12 yeah I mean that's a I think that's kind of a low estimate for you Meaning that you should cut me off around 15? 20. 
20. Okay. Wait, you you're not driving. Oh, this is true. This is true. I just have to go home and sleep. So. Right. I'm pacing because I'm going to be drinking heavily again tomorrow night. So. <laughs> But uh, you know, let's let's move on. Um, we actually I uh, had something that we were going to bring up, and uh, that maybe, we teased before the break. Yeah, that we, one? That's not much of a tease. No, we already we, said we were going to. We've always been it. out for a year now. Um, please explain to me why people are, are mad about the Last Jedi. I don't know. I I, I guess I, I stayed relatively unspoiled. I watched the movie when it came out on video. Thought it was good. Didn't understand why all all the hate. Okay, all I can give you is my personal opinion. Okay, and I was extremely disappointed. In it. Just with basically how Ryan Johnson, right? I Writer, it was director. Leon, but okay. All right, I'm going with Ryan because, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm going with. That is a really cool mask. Oh yeah, it is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, he basically went in and undid everything that JJ was setting up. How so? Explain. It starts off with the beginning. The excuse Dude, me. Dude. <laughs> Come on, I just already? burped into the mic, yeah. Um, it starts off with the, the, the first beat of the movie. Look, when we come back in on Ray handing off the lightsaber, and he literally just tosses over his shoulder and walks away. How do you know that that wasn't the intention from the beginning? Why would they build it up that far just to basically give us all a big fuck you? Because now they get to do another build up. I mean, okay, unless unless somebody has come out and said this was not the original plan. And remember, J.J. is still kind of in charge of stuff. He's like <clears throat> overseeing stuff. I don't think that he would have let uh, them make that decision unless he was cool with it or it was already planned to begin with. Remember, the second movie in Star Wars trilogies are supposed to be the darker one. The down ending, yes. Yeah, the down ending. As Craig's and, and, told us. Yeah, and, and I thought, I mean... I wasn't surprised by that at all. I mean, this is a guy that's tried to stay away and doesn't want to be bothered. Okay? I mean, when the, those kids get on his grass and start knocking on his door, he's going to tell them to go away the first time. It just it, it felt to me, and there were other story beats, in that, and I wasn't prepared for this, so I, I don't know. And don't get me wrong, I saw the theater twice, and I purchased it on home video. Did you watch it on home video? We have not yet. We also have not watched Solo on home video yet either. We have that too. Um, which Solo was phenomenal, by the way. Oh, was it? I, I had. We'll talk off mic. I might be able to help you out with that. Okay. Um, and no, it's not illegal. I, I, I hear you groaning at me, so knock it off. Who? Not you. Them. Oh. The eponymous them. Oh, not, I thought you were pointing at the empty chairs. I was going to say, those people got up and walked away as soon as we started talking. We get that a lot, don't we? We do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. You would be. Two beers in. Yeah. I had to stop and do Anyway, it. continue. Um, what was my point? Besides the fact that I, I hated it so much that I watched it twice and... Yeah, pretty much it. that's where you were. Okay. You still haven't really explained to me why... Uh, what, what the deal is with it. Is that all it was? Just people thought that it should have been something different? Well, I mean, that was it from the beginning. Everyone, all the fanboys were pissed off because it was not the movie they wanted. Okay. At all. And Luke dying. and Which, I, I'm surprised you're not mad about. Because, well, I mean, we had that huge discussion after Force Awakens about how they should not ever kill Luke off and let him ride off in the sunset. That's because I don't think he's dead. He's already confirmed to be in the next movie. Okay. Because we've never seen Force Ghosts before. Yeah, but that's not really dead. And if he has more sure of a Force... Is. Yeah, but you can, in the past we've had Force Ghosts that showed up for one scene and went away. Um... Do you not think that it might be likely that he's going to be around a lot more than one scene? I hope so. Oh, and another thing that bothered me in the movie. The whole Space Mary Poppins. Refresh my memory. Leia floating through space. Oh yeah, that was weird. That, that yeah. was weird. Um, and I get that, and I thought it was kind of clever, because everyone was like, okay, here's where she dies, because they had to write her out. Cause, you know, spoilers, yeah. she's really dead. Uh, and they didn't. But, I mean, now it opens up the quandary with what do you do with her? That, that's going to be interesting. But that, you know, we'll, we'll find that out. Um, I actually thought the, the journey of him rising up to face uh, Kylo uh, was actually... Air <clears throat> quotes. Air face. Qu yeah. Uh, well, but you know what? As an old man, he might not have been able to put up as much of a fight as he did as a force projection. I mean, he looked younger. He looked like he was right back. And I am, I am not going to discount the brilliance of the way they did that. Yeah. 
because I didn't catch it until second viewing about how Luke's there, but all all the hints are there if you if you pay attention. Like he is not disturbing any of the dust or any other. Yeah, it was it was super clever, and I mean, if you're gonna talk about how can you know an aging let's say let's say you know an, an old man take on somebody that young and that strong um, with a force, uh, that that's how you do it. I mean, let's face it, you know, I mean, we had talked before about how tough Kylo is, about how much damage he takes, and he just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Um, do you really think Luke Skywalker, as you know, a sixty year old man, could take him? Probably not. With as strong as he is in the force, I think he could have. It's it's a debate. But that's probably also rose-colored glasses because Entirely he's our possible. hero. Yeah. Well, maybe it is it is height, maybe, but I, as he was at that point, especially probably out of practice, probably really well, out definitely of practice. definitely out of practice. Yeah. So, no, I thought it was a clever way to handle it. And like I said, I, I'm not convinced that... Because he, he didn't get struck down. He just disappeared. We don't know. Maybe he needs some time to reform. Who knows? Maybe that used up all his energy. I mean, it, we, we don't know the rules. They're showing this new... We didn't know Jedi could do that before this movie there may be other things we don't know they can do so no i'm not convinced that he's gone or dead okay that, that's a new take on it because yeah. i immediately went with luke's dead yeah no i i didn't think that i thought that we were supposed to feel that way but i also knew this is the second movie in the trilogy it has to end on a down note and with one of our heroes seeming like they're in peril or permanently gone just yeah, like they already did that in, yeah i was gonna say they already did that in force awakens which by the way that scene Still gets me every time. I still yeah. shed a tear. Yes. Well, I was actually referring to the end of Empire Strikes Back. Oh. With with not knowing not knowing the fate of the hero. No, Han Solo was definitely dead. There was no there was no doubt. He's yeah yeah yeah. You get a giant lightsaber through the chest. You're done. Um, and then falling down a pit and being blown up. On yeah, and the, the entire planet blowing up. Yeah, that pretty much does it for you. Uh, but no, the way Luke went, um, it's it's not definitive. I mean, maybe they'll leave it alone, and maybe he really is dead, and he'll just be a Force ghost. But the way it stands now, with nothing bookending it, no more context, I don't believe we can make that call. Well, I've I've made that call for over a year, and I'm standing with it. But I'm not writing the movies. It's it's okay for you to be wrong sometimes. Once in a while. Uh, but thank you for, for explaining that to me because I totally didn't get it. I walked away from that movie going, hey, that was a really good movie. And uh, another thing that everyone points to with that is um, the whole um, going to the casino planet and the only point really being is rich people are bad. No. That's kind of obtuse. That's a bit... It was very social justice warrior, you know, rubbing your face in that. We're going to probably see even more of that in our movies going forward. Yeah, because you can't get away from that now. Irritating. As you know, um, it's not... I mean, I don't mind a message, but uh, sometimes it's a little too ham-handed or heavy-handed, right. as they say. Uh, and ham-fisted. Certainly, ham-fisted, there you go. I knew ham was involved. I, but, you know, I, I feel like we're seeing that... What did I see? I saw a ton of that in something else recently. It's, I forget what it is. It's in everything now. You can't yeah. get away from it. Well, that's part of the reason I think that they say that, uh, you know, the conservatives say that uh, Hollywood is um, left elitist, you know, uh, li- or liberal elitist. Uh, you know, it is tough. Sometimes it just needs to be entertainment. Uh, there, yeah, are, there are places where it makes sense. Um, and some people have made the argument, well, no, if you believe in something, you need to preach it all the time. Um, but there are some places where it's not necessary. Right. I have never once on our podcast discussed my belief in the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Actually, I believe you have. Fuck. Because where I edited that out. Pretty sure that came up once before. Uh, but what? I, okay, we, I have to pull the curtain back. What does that even reference? Is that is that a L. Ron Hubbard Scientology thing? No, no. That's uh, if I remember this correctly. It was a a comment, basically talking about freedom of religion uh, and basically saying that you know if, if I'm not allowed to infringe on uh, infringe on your right to believe in what you believe in you can't infringe on my right to believe in this flying spaghetti monster um, they were making a comparison trying to make a point in a conversation I forget who that was I think it might have actually been a famous atheist or something like okay. that I don't know I just that's the one thing I always latch on to when religion comes up I, a lot of people are familiar with that phrase so but shall we move on now I kind of want a ham and spaghetti Ham and spaghetti? Separately, not together. Wait, that might not be so bad. But we, could do we should probably still move on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the next thing I was going to talk about is... Ham and spaghetti? Not ham oh. and spaghetti. Shut the fuck up, Paul. <laughs> well, that doesn't make for very good 
podcast. <laughs> okay. Come on, people love to listen to me talk. Uh, an interesting thing happened this week. Now, are you familiar uh, with what happened on the Goldbergs recently, or do you even know what that is? Freddy Krueger. Yes. Yes. Uh, ABC's sitcom The Goldbergs had a, a special <laughs> appearance by Robert England dressed as Freddy Krueger. Uh, now, it was a, a dream sequence. I, I don't watch the show, so I, I don't know the characters, but one of the characters watched The Nightmare on Elm Street, because this is set in like, the 80s. It takes place in the 80s, Yeah, yes. they, they watched The Nightmare Late on Elm Street. Late 80s. Yes. Maybe early 90s at this point, because I know they did a whole... Batman 89 episode directed by Kevin Smith. Sorry. Oh, I, I don't Derailed know. you. Sorry. Um, so I, I guess one of the characters watches A Nightmare on Elm Street, and then they dream about Freddy. And, I, you know, as you know, Robert England, uh, quite a number of years ago, said he was done playing Freddy. He also did his last appearance in costume at a convention. It was a big deal. And, uh, you know, he's like, he's done with it. You know, the man's 71 years old, I believe. Is 71, he? 72, yeah. And so... He came out and said this week that putting the costume back on and doing that, he had a lot of fun, and he thinks he has one more movie in him. I heard that. The producer yes. or executive producer of the Goldbergs immediately publicly tweeted the head of New Line and said, I've done my job, now do yours. Nice. Yes. Uh, and if you think about it, this might be a perfect storm coming off the huge box office success of Halloween. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they're doing nothing with the franchise. There's there's nothing being planned. They they don't know what to do with it after the failed 2010 movie. Robert England comes out and says, "I'll do one more." Yeah. You jump. You on immediately that. sign it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this this might actually happen because it, it's one of those things. For it to happen, certain stars had to align, and they're not going to align any more than they have here. Right now, it looks like they have. Yeah. So I, I actually think it's going to happen. I think we're going to see it. They're already talking, uh, you know, a sequel to Halloween Horror is big again. Yes. I mean, and that all sprung board off of it, right? I mean, that's oh, yeah. kind of what's bringing all of this back. Which, by the way, have you finally gotten to watch that? Yes, I have. Okay. But I'll finish your news item first before we get into that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like, I mean, I know it's early days, but I mean, I'm just basing it off this. New Line doesn't know what to do, and England says he wants to do another one. Of course, they're going to do you it. You do it, yeah. yes. So, I think it's a done deal. Again, you're just printing money. Yeah. Do it. And, you know, it's sad. I'm glad that he's willing to come back. I, I know that they're going to be looking at it for an eye to a sequel. Like, the new Halloween movie apparently ends in a place where they could do a sequel, or it's its own thing. Uh, I don't know how you do that if the guy's not going to make another movie. Right. I will. My wife asked me about it today, because I was telling her about this, and she goes, well, didn't they have someone else play him for a few movies? I'm like, it was only one. It was 2010, right. and it was played Jackie by Jack. Earl Haley. Earl Haley, yeah. And, you know, I really liked that version. I didn't see that. I heard it was way darker than some of the It, it was, but, but how, where do you go? Do you try to get somebody to, to hit the same beats, or do you take it in a different direction? They went in a different direction. It's a serviceable horror movie. Horror movie. Jackie Earl Haley did a great job. Did he? Oh, yeah. I, there, I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. The problem is it didn't do so well at the box office because... It wasn't what people thought it was going to be. Gotcha. Um, on its uh, on its own, it's a fantastic horror movie. There, there are a few flaws, but there's a few flaws in every, every movie. movie. Look at the old Nightmare on Elm Street movies with Robert England. There's a couple of those that have some really, really awful story beats in them. Uh, it happens. But I, it's if they're going to try to continue it past this potential remake or relaunch, they have to seriously consider who's going to do that. And I just think it's sad that Jackie Earl Haley isn't going to get that nod or that opportunity now. Yeah, because I think he did a great job. I should go back and watch that. I am you, so you far should. behind on horror movies at all. Yeah. Like, literally, I think in the last decade, I've seen it. Oh, well. I, I think uh, recent performances have shown us that uh, Haley can definitely do comedy and can definitely do funny. So, had they given him a script that was written like that, like the old movies, he would have pulled it off. Instead, they gave him something different, and he performed the hell out of it nice I still remember when he was on the human target he was like a supporting player like one of the guys in the crew on that TV show and it was a great show I, I really enjoyed it he was awesome in it. and he was Ror- Rorschach right? yeah he was Rorschach he was also in the uh, first season of Preacher uh, more recently yes yes he was he was great that's the only, the only season of Preacher I watched really yeah I oh, it's off gotten so that. much better has it yeah the, the first season was a prequel to the comic book. They didn't yeah, even it was get to terrible. The, yeah. I, I really didn't like the first season. No, I thought it was okay. It, it, once you see it in retrospect, they had to tell all that story to do what they're doing. They've done going forward. Going that forward has been fantastic. Yeah, even my wife used to complain about watching the first season, but now we look forward to it. Nice. Maybe I should have to go back to it. You should. That's, that's, that's another one that no one else in the house would watch. True. Speaking of new shows, have you had an opportunity to check out Titans? 
No. Because I did not have the streaming service. So basically... Apparently you ponied up for it. Yeah, because I wanted to check it out. You know, I'm a big Teen Titans fan from the uh, the cartoon, not the comic book. And, uh, I mean, it, it's a good deal. I mean, it's not a whole lot per month. And I mean, Batman the Animated Series, come on. All of that's on there, too? Like, everything. Maybe there's stuff missing, but, I mean, it seems like everything that they've ever done is there. That's amazing. You know, Warner Brothers there's Animation. There's comics on there, too, right? Yeah, it's a really limited selection, though. I tried to go through it, and, I mean, I wouldn't expect there to be something new, but one of the weird things about it is they'll have parts of runs oh but, but not, not the whole story yeah it's, marvel unlimited did the same thing that it's, was yeah, it's piecemeal you, you know they, they need to do some work on that uh, but yeah no, i wanted to check it out because you know how do you do that how do you do that show titans yeah especially yeah. with like you know starfire and beast boy so i was really curious to see how they did it now i'm going to tell you something i i'm right now there i think there are two episodes in um Oh, so it is a week by week. It's week, yeah. It's not. It's nice. not everything. A uh, new episode comes out tonight. Probably already came out. Now, I'm looking forward to watching it every week. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Not because it's not interesting, engaging, and fun to watch. Because it's all of those things. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what they're doing yet. It's definitely darker. There are some character changes. Um, but they, they, the team hasn't coalesced. They're not even all together. The only two that have met each other so far are Dick Grayson and um, uh, Raven. You know, yeah, Star, Starfire and from saying, Russia and Beast Boy, I don't know where the hell he is. And they're saying that Raven is kind of like the linchpin of all of this, right? I, it That's seems where they're like going it. With it. It seems like it, yeah. Uh, but she hasn't been involved with the other ones yet. Um, but it, it, so, so far, it, it's a good um, It's a good thriller. You know, it's interesting. There's lots of action. It's all, all done really well. Uh, the really the thing that's really throwing me right now is Starfire. Is apparently, I, this is what it seems to me. The story so far, this is what I think happened. She wakes up in the body of this Russian girl, black girl with red hair or whatever. Doesn't know who she is. Has to look at her own IDs. Tries to escape, and they're chasing her. And she, she kills them with powers. But, yeah, I mean, there's no setup at all. It's like, what is going on here? Is she an alien? Did she just have powers? Why does she not seem to know who she is? I mean, our, our first scene of her is like, she's in a car, and some other guy is driving, and these people try to kill him, kill them. They shoot up the car and everything. And when she comes to, like before, she was like laughing, and, you know, they're driving. When she comes to, she doesn't seem to know who she is. And then she tries to go back to what she thinks is the hotel, asks where her room is, gets up to the room. Somebody says, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to be here. And she says, tell me who this guy is. And he's like, you already know. Well, tell me anyway. And then she uses her powers, to, these new powers, to kill the guy. It's really confusing. That's strange. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Is she supposed to be an alien? Did she? Yeah, they, they're being super, super, almost too, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, Obtuse? Yeah, they're being too obtuse. No, they're they're being too mysterious about it. I, where that particular character arc doesn't even make sense. I mean, it's okay for something not to make sense at first, but it doesn't make sense. Make sense. Gotcha. If that, that's what I mean. It's like I have no idea what the hell I'm watching, and no indication to at least clue me in. Beast Boy, we've seen in one scene where he steals a video game from a store as a tiger. <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, but the, the stuff with Dick Grayson and Raven has been interesting. You know, it's in. Jason Todd's in this too. Not or yet. He will be. Not I yet. Guess. He will be. Now they did have Hawk and Dove in. See, and that's episode. why I want to uh, check that, it out. That was actually really cool. I mean, that that actually made more sense than anything else that I've seen so far. Um, yeah. But I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it, right now I, I don't want to say anything bad about it. It's good. Uh, but I think they need to tighten things up a bit. And I think we're gonna take a break because we may have uh, somebody sitting down with us. Welcome to this episode of Geek Pod. My name is Josh, and that is Hugh, and that is Paul. I think we just had a Mandela effect. Did you? Yeah, yeah because I don't remember there being a third host on this show. Well, I've been here all along. I don't know what you guys... Damn it! Right. Third house, that third host burned down years ago. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I hope my underwear is still in the same drawer when I get home. There never was a Geek Pod. This has all been in your mind. <laughs> How you doing, John? I'm awesome. I love that you guys come out to our silly little zombie ball and have fun with us. I love the fact that I ran into you at Wegmans and you invited us back. Of course. <laughs> you have a, anything that I am at and you want to come podcast from, you have an open invitation. Write that down. You write that down, please. 
Just because I love this medium and I love this this uh, uh, what you guys do and I love this product and any any other any fellow geeks that want to just record themselves yapping about random bullshit for hours are my kind of people. So all right, I'm down with that. So should I tell him what my original plan was with the recorder? Do you think he'll get a kick out of that? Yes, yes no, I think he'll okay. appreciate it. So, uh, I, Paul messaged you about possibly doing a little ghost hunting or something. Oh, over yeah, here, right. Yes, okay. Yes. Here's what my original plan was. We were going to leave you in the dark okay. because I, I wanted to get your reaction, but we have a, a Zoom recorder now, so we yeah. use that as a portable recorder. Mm-hmm. We'd use another small handheld, and mm-hmm. what we do is we would do a few EVPs. And I was going to say, Josh, let me ask the first few questions, you know, establish a baseline, and then you, you can jump in. What I was going to do is pre record the first three questions, and on the third one, there was going to be a response. <sighs> And the response, I had to check with him because because of my job, I don't get to listen to the show, right, except right, occasionally. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was going to find out, okay, which one of the co-hosts do we pick on and just say, you know, Cody Mac yes. killed me and left me in the basement. And get, <laughs> Hugh you would have set me down a dark wormhole <laughs> that I would still be, I would not I would not come out of my house if I had heard that. We can do, probably do some EVP stuff. Did you bring anything or no? Yes. We can probably creep back. around. I'm going to ask because a lot of places that are off limits at the landmark, for zombie ball night, but I think that we can get access. Yeah, to but it. not for you, right? I mean, we can go to some places. Right. I mean, if you wait, I've heard that before girl. and it didn't end. <laughs> well. That was Saratoga. We promised we'd never talk about it. Oh, oh yeah, with you too. Jeez. No, Hugh, you definitely want to come. Come here. I want to show you something in the basement. I don't know, guys. Nah, come on. <laughs> I believe it started with you. You want to go get some Thai food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it started. Oh, that's how they always get you. If there's food involved, I'm like, well, hold on. Where are we going? <laughs> right, yeah. And then I'll follow you to wherever we're going. You want pizza, Josh? Oh, to be yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. there might be a dungeon involved. What, what, what about the pizza? There's still going to be pizza? <laughs> well, as long as there's pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can handle pans. What is it? Pizza. <laughs> is it one night? All right. Is it stuffed crust? Because uh, there's a lot of things it, I'll do. It will be. All right, thank you. <laughs> it will be. You, <laughs> the pizza may not be, but the night will be stuffed crust, I assure you. Oh, I think you should bring the levels down. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Oh, man. There we go. That's fantastic. Right. I was asking you guys, too, before we started, if, if you're... Could, are you still doing What Are We Geeking Out On? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's I'm geeking geeks? out on I'm geeking out on The House, The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. And you said, Hugh, that you're five episode episodes in? five, I believe. Do you love it or do you hate it? So far, I enjoy it. Um, I've heard it referred to as This Is Us with ghosts yeah um, the last episode I saw was I think Elle's story where you suddenly find out where the bat neck lady comes that's from the, that's the one I finished today yes okay and I mean I'll tell you that was like whoa see, see yeah. where that came from yes and I'm not sure if, 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 if she's dropping down up through the show's own asshole or if there's a an actual um idea or, or common theme in a yeah there. it could go either way hopefully we're not giving away too much spoiler alert on that but will is was now the bent neck lady all along is the question I, like, I think they proved that i think they said that she was and i know you haven't seen it yet paul but yeah i'm completely i started lost. it because well, honestly i started it because they gave me money to read commercials for them on the air oh, nice. and i was well, like all right well what is this show i like creepy stuff and then cody my co-host <clears throat> came back and said hey that thing you read a spot for I watched it and it's really good and I like creepy stuff but I generally like creepy stuff that's based within nonfiction. you know like I like right. shows and podcasts about things that are like alright well here's actual documented whatever this is more fiction and I watched one episode and then I watched the second episode and then I kind of walked away for a week and then today I watched three more episodes Nice. and it's exactly what Hugh said it's like there's a lot of emotional family drama wrapped around this creepy ghost story. I, I like it. I like it. I think I like it. I'm deciding I like it. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's been described as a slow burn, and I've some of the early reviews for it uh, actually said that it's and I and I try to keep away from spoilers. I just read the headlines, but they said it's a slow burn, but it's an amazing story. It really is. And then everybody and I, I'm knock on wood. I'm blessed that nobody has spoiled it for me because everyone's like, oh, dude, when it's over, you're going to love it. And I don't know what that means. And if you're listening to Geek Pod right now, please don't tell me what that means because I don't want to know. But I think it pays off, and I'm hopeful that it pays off. And sometimes when it takes a long time for something to pay off, you're pissed off about wasting so much time. Right. Other times, 
that anticipation and those layers make it better. It yes. wouldn't be as good if they didn't take the time to really set the stage. Like today, like one of the episodes I watched today, I don't think it was the Ben Neck Lady episode, it was like one of the other ones, but it was like a lot of about the personal story. And while watching it, I'm like, oh, come on, right? But then you get to the end of it or the next episode, you're like, well, I had to know all that. I'm, yeah. I'm thankful that I knew all that because now I've got to know these layers. Yeah, I, and especially, I mean, with what happened with Elle. Yeah. I mean, that was so much more tragic after seeing. I mean, you're basically watching the same two days from five different people's perspectives. It is so well written, Paul. Really? They Holy intertwine crap. everything. Like, they'll do. That's what, that gives. I don't know if I can say this, but it's going to be a boner. I'm not going to I don't know if that gives you. Uh, you know, if Geek Pod allows boner oh, recommendations, Christ. but I get boners. I get boners when they re- when they weave storylines together. And there's a there's a scene where there's like you're watching one character, and he comes back to his apartment, and there's another character at the apartment, and he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you're like, well, how do we get to that point? And you assume one thing, but then two episodes later, now you're following that other character and how they got to that apartment, and you're like, ah. Oh, God damn yeah, it. It's completely no different. Shit. And I love it because and I love when stories overlap like that. Oh, I just love it. They're love also it. weaving in a lot of flashbacks, which sometimes is irritating. I mean, you're watching from scene to scene, they're going back and forward, back and forth mm-hmm. through time, but it actually works. Have you have you started following the fake the uh, not fake, but the uh, hidden ghosts? No, I haven't, because I was worried I'd, I'd catch spoilers. <clears throat> I, Yeah, you're probably smart to do that. I, I sent a few photos. So, Paul, what they do is in every scene where there's something, like, tragic happening, there's ghosts all over the background. No but shot. you're focused on the main characters so you don't see them. So there's this whole, and there's Reddit threads, and there's Twitter accounts dedicated to people like grabbing screenshots of, let's say, the family's running down the stairs, and when you're watching it, you're like, oh, there goes the family. <clears throat> but then you catch this screenshot of it, and there were three ghosts in the scene that you never noticed. Nice. And there was just dozens of examples of this, and it's I, so that's what I'm geeking out on. Too. I have to check that out. Also, our good friend Jeremy Ambler was in episodes two and three of that. Oh, he yeah. was. Yeah. Oh. It's a, what are you guys on? I want to know what I got to discover. Like, what are you geeking out on right now? Well, I'm enjoying Titans quite a bit. Yeah, you guys were just talking about that before I walked down. What is Titans? Uh, It's based on, um, you're familiar with Teen Titans. You probably know know, the the TV show. Oh, like the kids show Teen Titans Go? Yeah. Yes. Or the original one from, you know, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, They're making, they've made a TV version of it. Uh, It's a lot more grown up. It's a lot darker and grittier. I like it. Uh, But so far, it's good. I mean, it's only two episodes in, so I can't really give you a recommendation either way. Okay. Um, but so far, I mean, I think I like it. I don't want to stop watching it. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't. What's say it I'm, on? How do I find it? It's on the Warner Brothers streaming network. Hey, what is this? I gotta go to. I gotta, I gotta buy another subscription now. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Or you need to learn about torrents. Yeah. yeah. I apologize. Um, if you play in that, that <laughs> particular realm. I, and I do, and I do, but I never know how to like. I mean, I know how to find this. Tore the episodes out. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I'm so. It's gotten to the point now where I'm so lazy. Back in my twenties. Everything was stolen and torrented and found illegally. And now that I've got two kids, Paul, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Once you get kids, you're like, what is it? Nine bucks? I'll just pay you the nine bucks. <laughs> right. I don't got time to look for a Here, thing. Yeah. With, what is it? Uh, what is it? Because yeah. you'll still you'll go to like, torrent an episode, and you'll download it, and it won't be the episode. Like It's still the same stuff we had with Napster. Back in the 90s, you were like, oh, this new Radiohead album's out. And you download it, and it's not radio. It's some guy in his garage. <laughs> so, like, you still have those things happening. I'm like, what is it, nine bucks? All right, I'll skip Taco Bell for a day. Right. And I will, I'll just get this because it'll be available to me. But is that, the, that going to be the, the trend now that you guys see? Like, every media provider is oh, going to yeah. just put out their content for 10 bucks a month, and then that's where you, where you get it. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They're all doing it. Disney's about to do one that's going to have, like, all the Star Wars stuff and the Marvel stuff. Well, and all the Disney stuff. And, and the, the existing television networks are getting in on that. We were talking about it earlier. Uh, everyone's complaining about the, the ratings for The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the ratings are actually good when you factor in the, the Live Plus 7. But they have their own app now. Mm-hmm. And you can watch it commercial free. They are, I bet you money, they are making more money per episode of Walking Dead per subscriber than they are per viewer on TV. Are you still watching The Walking Dead? Of course I am. Yes. I gave up on it this season. Did you? I I don't know why. I don't know why. There's no, I have no reason. I, and it has nothing to do with Andrew Lincoln so, leaving. So, I don't care. So you watched the end of last season, but not the beginning of the I just season. haven't gotten back into it. Okay, you know what's funny? What? Is this is the season. So far, four episodes in, they've 
actually restored the character of Rick Grimes. <gasps> I said to him last year that they had damaged the character so much. I would agree with crazy, you. I would that agree. he could never get back to where he is in the comics. Like his hero's journey is too damaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually did what I said. I swore they couldn't do. Four episodes in, this is the guy from the comics right now that I've wanted to see for the past four or five years. And you would agree, Paul? Oh yeah, yeah. Th- this is a really good season. Are they building him back up to kill him off? How, how is he going to die? By Negan's no, hand, or do we not know? No idea, because no he's still alive in the comics. Yeah. This is uncharted territory. Yeah. That's unbelievable to me. Well, you know what's unbelievable to me is I'm running a show, one of the biggest shows in the world, for one of the biggest networks in the world, mm-hmm. and I decide to kill off a character that is still alive in the comics that could take over for my lead if right. they had to without checking with my lead to see if he was going to leave the following <laughs> season. What, what is that? So Andrew Lincoln was... He wasn't going to leave? Well, here's the thing. I don't know if he was going to leave, but it makes sense. If Rick died, Carl would take over. That's right. how things are right. supposed to be. Why wouldn't you make sure? If you decide you're going to do something and kill the guy's son without... I mean, this isn't in the comics. Right. It's a complete curveball. Why wouldn't you make sure that your lead wasn't going to leave the next year as well? Why Good wouldn't point. you pay him a bunch of money? Hey, you have to stay on at least a few more years because we're going to do this. Andrew okay. Link is making $11 million in a season right now. He's the highest paid. He is the t- out of the top 10 highest paid actors. This is off the top of my head right now. Out of the top 10, <clears throat> um, eight of them are between Big Bang Theory and Modern Family. One of them is a random NCIS character. And then number 10 is Andrew Lincoln, $11 million a year. Jesus. If I'm Andrew Lincoln, and I'm not, so I can't really like talk to a well, if I was this guy, I would have no problem just being Rick Grimes for the rest of my life. Right. Like, all right. I, like, what, what is Andrew Lincoln going to go do now that won't be compared to being him being Rick Grimes? Well, you know why he left, right? No, I don't. He's from England. His wife and his kids are in England. I, you, I did know that, yes. Yeah, and he wanted to go back. Right? Yeah, and, and, well, I personally, I mean, if you're making that much money, why don't you move them here to yeah. keep making money, you know? Like, as one of those situations, I mean, you guys probably have a million of these, these, these situations where you're like, guy gets a big role, makes a ton of money as that big role, thinks he can go do something else, and then never does anything else. Yeah. I fear that this will be similar for Andrew Lincoln. I feel like you can't... Cat, like, oh, let's go to Big Bang Theory, which I'm not a fan of, but you go to any of these guys, when Big Bang Theory ends, they're not going to suddenly go be serious actors. Right. You're that yeah. guy. But Johnny Galecki does have a returning, uh, a recurring role on the Connors. He does. So. He's the one guy that can get away with it, because he started at the Connors and then <laughs> went over to Big Bang Theory. But I will, if, if Hugh and, and Paul say that i got to go back to The Walking Dead, I'll give it another shot. Do, Do it. it. Yes, come back. I can't speak for how they're going to handle uh, the, his ending and what they're going to do going forward. I will say that, if nothing else, I'm excited because we've never been in a place where it was completely untethered from mm-hmm. the comic book. We're going to be there now. Mm-hmm. Once once Aunt, uh, Rick Grimes dies, we're untethered completely. It can go in any direction. And if nothing else, maybe it's been trying to be different but still hold to the source material that's caused them to make such questionable decisions over the years. Well, that's what I love about it. I'm with you on that. I love that they're finally, if they keep the show on the air, they're going to diverge oh. because they've been so tight. Everybody will be like, well, in the comics, this happens. And it's like, they can't now. Shut up. All right? It's a new show now. Please. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're definitely keeping on the air. They yeah. have a, AMC has a 10-year plan. Yeah. And is it still doing well and the rate of people still watching it? The, the way it breaks down is this. Uh, when it, when it came back this year, people were freaking out. They were like 1.96, 2 million viewers. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's hugely, hugely down from where they've been in the past. Uh, what happened is they eventually figured in live plus seven. Okay, that's 8.9 million viewers. Yeah. That makes it the number two drama on TV behind This Is Us, which means you're solid. Yeah. You're awesome. That's you're not, doing well. That's not taking into account all the people that are watching it on AMC's own app. This is uncharted yeah, territory yeah. because we don't know how we're keeping track of yeah, all these things. It also now. doesn't right. count, which we touched on earlier, so I'm sorry to retread familiar ground. Um, when these shows get sold to Netflix. Okay, how many people are like, oh, yeah, I can't believe that, you know, Carl died on, on Walking Dead. And you realize they're watching on Netflix. They're not watching it on Netflix. Right. TV. They have still a ton of money left to make on this episode that just aired once it goes to Netflix. I can't buy. express to you guys what a weird time we are in for media. Just doing what you do, first of all, <clears throat> and and coming from the world I come in from, right? Because it's and this is gonna be boring probably for the audience. But if you look at like what my numbers bring in, right? There'll be 
I think it's something like 150,000 people a week listen to me on the radio, right? Yeah. But then I've got this download world that exists where it's another 40,000 people. And now I've got this Twitch world where it's like another number. And you've got this, like, where it used to be like, all right, The Walking Dead's on TV and they have this many viewers and that's that. Now it's what Hugh is saying where it's, all right, well, you have to piecemeal this whole thing together and say this is the actual number of people are watching it, or somebody like me who has missed how many episodes are there now? Four. Four. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and watch four episodes probably tomorrow, and where they're not gonna count my numbers because they're past that. Like you know, in the yeah. ratings books or whatever. I'm just a nobody that went back and watched it, you know, four weeks later. So it's a it's as a media nerd, which is what I am. It's a weird place to be in because everything is so segmented and everything is so. Uh, compartmentalized, uh, compartmentalized, and you, you're talking to me like this is the Marvel and the W. Well, who do you say with the uh, Warner Brothers? Yep, Warner Brothers. Like everybody's gonna have their own streaming thing, and everyone's got their own content. And they're like, if you want it, here it is. Which I think is great for us, the consumer, because I don't love giving Spectrum two hundred and ten dollars a month. Right. If I can just give this company nine bucks, this company nine bucks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I, I think it's better for us. But it's weird, uncharted territory right now. Oh, absolutely. And, and if you want to actually have your mind blown further. Think about the progress in the past 30 years we've made in media. This is television, radio, everything all together. Where we were 30 years ago to where we are right today. What the hell is that going to look like 30 years ago? Dude, I know. I know. I can't even imagine. I mean, I would not have thought podcasting would exist. Even, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, it's it's amazing how far we've come in a short span of time, and as technology progresses, I don't even know what it could potentially look like. Oh, it's so, and it's so awesome. Ooh, who's this? Oh, oh, me? Is this oh, me? Oh, yours. Yeah. That's for you. I like when people bring me food. Um, I, when I go talk in colleges and stuff, I say, you guys are at the best time now because you don't need anybody. Like, look at you guys. You're set up here. You're recording all on your own equipment. You don't need anybody. We kind of guided guys. you to invite us. <laughs> well, I've right. always invited, boys. Um, but then you've got guys like this ninja guy on Twitch who's making 500 grand a month. I don't know if you follow this guy. It's, his name is Ninja. He is the highest paid streamer anywhere right now. I think it's like Fortnite's his big game right now, whatever it is. $500,000 a month as a 20-something-year-old guy shows you that there's so much money out there and an audience out there that is just trying to be figured out and we're in that era right now it's weird it's weird man i want some of that money i want 500 right. grand a month you're right yeah yeah i would have liked to have spent more than 80 bucks on groceries this meeting <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest can i can i offer you some mac and cheese yeah, and i actually had some yeah the mac and cheese is good there's bacon in it. Mm-hmm. you can't go wrong with bacon in anything no bacon on the pizza bacon in the mac and cheese look Speaking of that, that leads me to something I was going to bring up to you, Paul. So I took the plunge today, and I ate the Nightmare King. Did you? Did I you was it. There? Do you know? You know what it is, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah because it's I know what it is. Yes. Okay. Um, it was different. First of all, I heard it's very salty. Well, it, it, the, the cheese is very gooey, so yeah. I can see where somebody might take it that way. But that's really the cheese. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's interesting is in the middle of it. The chicken texture is weird because you can't taste the chicken. You can taste the burger, but you got the texture of chicken, and you're like, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, but around the outside, where you get the crispy edges of the chicken, so the, the crispy seasoned breading with the beef and the cheese and the onion comes together, and it's almost glorious. Did it give you nightmares? I haven't gone to sleep yet. I ate it today. I had it for lunch. I, I, I've seen that, and it looks tempting. But something about a green bun. Yeah, it turns no, me off you. and I can't hang with a green bun. I don't know. The, I, even in Orion Slave Girl? Mm-hmm. Was that? Even in Orion Slave Girl? I, I mean, sure. I hear you. But I don't know. But doesn't that turn my shit purple? Am I going to be eating like... That's the black bun. I don't know what the green bun is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let us know tomorrow. No, no, no. You say nightmares. I ate it for lunch and I, now I look. I see a guy in a, dressed like a bee and a guy dressed like Dracula. So. Here we go. Now I'm in pizza. <laughs> Well, the mascot, and you're like, I want to say Papa Midnight, but you're getting old, so you're probably more like Papa 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down for the title. <laughs> Papa 845. <laughs> All right, boys, I'm going to go eat and go wander around. All right. We'll I love Geek Pot. I love you guys dearly. Thank you for coming out and doing these stupid things with us. All right, thanks for inviting us.
you're the best. Well, anytime. And I mean that. Anytime we're at something, Geek Pop show up, please. Cheers. So we're just going to start showing up and they're really like, any random car dealership I'm at or mattress store, I want Geek Pop rolling in. Walking in with a Zoom. What's up, John? Please, let's do it. And I'm going to go find out if we can ghost hunt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right. I will later. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Grosz and I from Garrock. That was awesome. Why don't we uh, we take a break here then? It's got pretty loud down here. So. Never, never do I hit the mic, the record button at the right time. No, I think you're going to hit the mic probably more and more as the night goes yeah. on. Oh, you're and you've got your headphones on backwards. I don't care. Uh, now I've got it repositioned again. Okay. Well, it was awesome having Josh sit down with us. Uh, it was great talking to him again. Uh, man, that, that guy's got a radio voice. He's got a radio voice like John Carucci has a radio voice. John, that's your buddy, right? Yeah, the one who did the uh, the opening for Geek Pop Blue. I mean, yes. you can just hear it. You know, it's a this different time, kind. Man, yes. Yeah, it's a different kind of radio voice, but man, it's a perfect uh, radio voice. Before we get too much further, I have to give a, a plug here. A uh, correct one because we kind of half-assed it. Earlier. Yeah, we talked about the. We geek potted it. Earlier. We geek potted it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the psychic who uh, who fed us earlier. Uh, her name is Maggie. Now we actually started talking to her, and hopefully we will uh, learn more about her. But then she had a customer, and of course, I mean, yes. we're, we're all about even we're at conventions. Business. We yes. want you to make your money. We Business want to talk first. to you, but yeah, unless you're Charles your Barnett the third. Yes, Charles Barnett the third can suck my dick. <laughs> but I do want to uh, give her a plug. Uh, we haven't talked to her yet, so hopefully I don't find out that she's an awful person. She seems really. She sweet. does not. She, she offered sweet. us. Food. She brought Josh a plate of food. That's awesome. Uh, so her name is Maggie. You can uh, find her on Twitter at, at MaggieHart2, uh, Instagram at MaggieHart1, email is Maggie underscore heart at Outlook.com, and her website is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, do I have to say that? No. MaggieHart5.wixsite, that's W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com forward slash MaggieHart. Phone number on the card is 315-402-0816. Well, it is a business card. I was going to stop you there. I was like, maybe we shouldn't give out her phone number. No, it's your business card, and uh, I mean, let me read the back of this. There's it's a lot. Ordained in spiritual warfare, internationally recognized for deliverance and spiritual guidance, land and ground clearings, healing and knowing fruits of the spirit, author, lectures, classes, podcast host for the Positude Podcast. So okay. If you're looking for a little of that in your life, jot some of that down. I hope I didn't say it too quickly. We will also... Add it to show No, notes. we won't. We never no, we will, anything. because I'm going to have you jot that down, and that's why I'm keeping jot it. Jot it down. It's on a fucking card. Why do I have to write it down? <laughs> well, put Maggie's info. Oh, here, put Maggie's show notes. info. <laughs> see? You're, you're getting uh, We're pulling back the curtain for you to see my half-assed way of doing things here. Maggie's info. Compelling okay, you, you know, shit right there. Actually, you know what? I, I, I will say that I, I really shouldn't give you shit about putting stuff in show notes because shows actually have to go up for there to be show notes. Show notes to go with. See, so I haven't missed a damn thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not technically. Right. If that's the route you're going, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's a very nice geek pad shirt. Thank you. I found my new one. I had to wear my old one uh, at the, uh, the convention. So I, I tear the house apart trying to find my new shirt because okay. my old one had a stand on it couldn't find it i'm like you know what i haven't worn it since the last geek pod thing we did i don't wear it you know out when we do other things i couldn't have lost it wasn't in the closet ended up wearing my old one the day after the convention my wife I'm goes so oh look what i found in one of my laundry baskets you were like you son of a bitch but well, we have this thing I, I i guess it's weird for Wait, guys to do you guys do laundry, laundry. what it's so what you guys do laundry See, I, I do my laundry, and I'll do everyone else's laundry. If you know, when I have a load, if there's stuff, I'll just grab it. And I do, I do actually, ninety-five percent of the laundry in the house. Nice, figure, right? You, you would think that somebody else might put it away, but that doesn't always happen, ever. Oh wait a minute, we're talking about laundry, and you're airing your dirty laundry. <laughs> well, no, it's not really dirty laundry, but yeah, my, my wife will put laundry away, but after it stacks up a little bit. Like, okay, here's the thing: if it's if I if I manage, because when I say, hey, I'm gonna go do wash my stuff, okay? Yeah. If I manage to get it downstairs with just my stuff, I wash it, I dry it, I take it immediately upstairs, and I put it away. Okay? Yeah. But usually what happens is I go wash my stuff. Oh, I've got some other stuff to put in there. Now this is a basket of mixed clothes. I don't know where the other stuff goes because I don't put away their laundry. Okay? Okay. I suppose I could learn, but I'm already doing everybody's laundry. I don't feel like I should have to. So a basket comes up, and it's mixed laundry, and it sits. So I just pull underwear out of it till I have no more clothes in the basket, and then it, you know it's somebody else's problem. Uh, I feel you on that one. But you know it's it's just one of those things. I don't 
I don't start the process because, I mean, I don't want to take my stuff out and then leave the other stuff on the bed. And she's like, oh, I don't feel like putting laundry away. I mean, I don't care. You know, she, she can live out of a clothes basket if she wants. Uh, I, I don't want to tell her you have to put laundry away. But if it's just my stuff, I take care of it. If it's not just my stuff, I don't. I, I, I don't fault you for that. Okay. I support you. Do you do your own laundry, Paul? Sometimes. Often, See, no, because... I've been um, told it's weird that I do my own laundry. It's weird to just just to do your own laundry, almost like roommates. So, are we on the radio this evening? Uh, no, and that mic's not even plugged in. But we can. Hold on one second. We can plug it plug in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Huh? Okay. We're not on the radio. No, we are podcasting, so we're recording it. It's like pretend radio. Fantastic. What are we talking about? Um, nothing. Yeah, really, right now we're talking about laundry of all things. So. Laundry. Yeah, seriously. I could talk to you for days about laundry. You'll probably want to come a little closer to the mic. We could talk for days about laundry. Could we now? No, no, we really could. That sounds like there's problems at home. I do. I have three of them. Oh, fantastic. How old? They're 16, 14, and 7. My goodness. Boys, girls? Three girls. Three girls. Three girls. Where's the boy? There's no boy. I try. Keep trying. I, no, I think I'm done. <laughs> Those days have passed. Sissy. <laughs> well, not, for, not, not for lack of trying. My wife and I tried. We, My parents tried. They tried three times. They had three boys, and then they said, "You know what? Damn it, we're gonna try one more time," and they did. And my mom went through an Elvis Presley stage, and I'm lame. I, as of this day, Social Security card, birth certificate aside, I am Lisa Marie. Really? Welcome to Elvis fucking Presley. That's okay. No, no, no. no we're, Trust we're me, I don't we edit that much. Fuck we want. Oh, yeah, we fantastic. Can't I had the good. worst potty mouth. No, no. Actually, we, we have been trying, and uh, for some reason, you know, it's it's secondary infertility. You know, it's it's we don't we've been to the doctors. They've checked man. things out. It's like no, sometimes listen, things just man, don't it's happen. No, man, it's God's will. It's, it's oh, whether you're willing to keep on going. We, or we not. we've been having unprotected sex. Every single week Atta for the past boy. seven years, and it hasn't happened. We're not hey, quitting, but... Hey, listen, if it happens, it's going to happen. Amen to you. Thank I you. was blessed. I am the only girl. I have 27 cousins. I'm the only girl. My mom's side and my dad's side. And the most hilarious part about it is every single one of my 27 cousins have all had girls. Holy shit. Every one of them, except for me. I've had a boy. I'm the only one with a boy in my family. See, no, that's and he's the only one with blue eyes. And I'm the only one with blue eyes. Just thought I'd tell you that. Thanks, Grandpa. I love you. <laughs> See, that, that's interesting because uh, my family line, there were only two boys, myself and my cousin Mike. And Mike had um, five girls. I had three. Yep, there you have it. It's there like you have it. G- genetics is just saying your name dies with you. <laughs> I don't think we can do anything about it. The shit's over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the name does not run on after this point. Yeah. Granted, that, that's the same thing in my household. It's, it ends with me as well. Well, you know what, though? One of my daughters says she's a lesbian, so she might hyphenate some shit and the name could live on. Hey, amen to that. Amen to that. You know what? To each his own. Who are you to judge? What do you have? Boys, girls, kids two, at all? Two girls. Two girls. Yes. Eight and six. You guys are so jealous of me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay Long with hair, it. blue eye, little three-year-old boy. Nice. Well, congratulations. You know, I'm really not. At this point, I wouldn't know what to do with a boy. If I could put it for you in practical <laughs> terms, okay? Um, I have a hard enough time wiping my own ass. <laughs> I can't imagine doing it for somebody who's being unresponsive or uncooperative. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the thing, you know, I mean, I would, a boy who on the balls, no, I just, what? What do I do? I no, at this point, I don't know. I know my way around a vagina like it's my business. Going three girls deep, you got a straight up job, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I would you not know too, what to man. Do. Yes. You know what, it's the weirdest thing. I, I thought to myself, the day the lady said, do you want to know what the sex is? And I said, what? I don't know. Do I really want to know? Yeah, I want to know. I was there all by myself. So, what the hell? Why not? She said, well, that's a leg. That's a leg. And that's a... And I looked at her, (laughs) and she looked at me, and I went, shut the fuck up. (laughs) I was so happy, man. I honestly don't know what I would do with a girl. God bless you. If she turned out like me, I'd fucking kill her. (laughs) 
I don't have a girl. It doesn't matter. Right, exactly. So there's no binding <laughs> Not yet. charges. I got a little fishing buddy, a hunting buddy. I'm a carpenter by trade. Oh, there I run my go. own business, construction company, man. I'll tell you what. This little boy, he works right alongside me every day, and I'm so damn proud. You know what? You should be proud, too. You should be proud, too. Boy or girl, nothing or not. Kids are fucking amazing. Bro. Oh, yeah. I just thought I'd leave it at that. Kids are amazing. Oh, by the way, what's your name? Lisa I Marie. Lisa. Oh, oh I, I thought you were just saying you go by Lisa Marie. No, no. Oh, no, okay, Lisa Marie. At least Lisa one of us Marie. listens. Lisa well, Marie? No, she said, she said it really quickly. She said, I don't care what anybody says. I, I just thought it was like, that's what you go by. I'm okay. fucking Elvis baby. Oh. Yeah. Nice meeting you. And where can we find you on social Paul, media? Paul and... Hugh. 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 It's been very nice to talk. I'm going to get back to my date. All right. Like, what the fuck is oh, I'm sure. Right. Have a good night. I only ask that because we usually ask people that. I wanted to see what reaction I get. What reaction? To what when I said, where can we find you on social media? Yeah, and that was clearly nowhere. Um, she's drunk. You think? Yeah, she's totally drunk. But fun. Yes. I was doing her own construction party. What? And she owns her own construction company. That's really cool. Yes. You don't get that a lot. So, where were we before that happened? I have no idea. Uh, well, let's move on to uh, some of the bullet points we have written down. We finished up Maggie's stuff, right? What? We finished up Maggie's stuff. That's why the headphones come in handy. Yeah, you know what? Headphones, it's time Might for be headphones. a good time. Because yeah, I right. can't hear what you're saying. So, I'm going to vamp for a second while you, you take care of that. Um, I, I'm guaranteeing that her date fucking hates us right now. What did you say? <laughs> I said her date thinks we're the greatest people on earth right now. I still can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> can you turn this up is the, the problem? The monitor, I guess. Does that mouse? Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I was saying that her date fucking hates us right now. Oh, I, well, why? Come on. Why? Um, because you have a magnificent beard, and she decided to come down and hang out with us. Yeah, for three minutes. That's all right. I'm sure she did as a joke. Actually, you know what? I, no one has any reason to be jealous, because I was thinking about this today. Do you realize that statistically, about 70 to 80 percent of the people at this thing tonight are going to go home and get laid? I'm not in that 70 percent. I, I know. Well, neither am I, but that's just because she'll be asleep when I get home. But, you know, no one has any reason to be jealous of us. Right, because they look at us and they say dorks. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So, what I wanted to talk about with you, and I don't know if you're caught up, but are you? Uh, how are you on the CW's new season? Caught up on Flash. I uh, have not watched this week's Arrow. Or, yeah, you're pushing it because that's going to pull that in. There you go. Um, and have not watched um, Legends yet. Really? Yeah. We only have so many days when I'm not playing um, uh, Marvel Strike Force. Lame. But anyway, have you, uh, have you tried it? I haven't tried it. Okay. Because no it's, it's a co- it's a collectible hero game. Again, it's just another version of the same crap they've been releasing. It's, it's basically another version of Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. what it is, but it's Marvel, so I. Have. You know who else is playing it? I don't care, but who? Madison. Oh, okay. Maybe I care. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Douche. But, <laughs> but speaking of games that are clones of other games, I've started playing Ghostbusters World. Have you checked that out? Uh, I was reading about it today. I haven't tried it yet. But it's I think actually I it's what Pokemon Go could have been and what Walking Dead Our World should have been. You should check it out. I, I don't know. I mean, I've only been playing for a few days, so I don't know if it's got legs, but uh, it's actually pretty cool so far. Now, it's funny you bring it up, and I was going to save this for a WTF, and I'm figuring an hour and a half into the show, maybe I can shoehorn it in. Okay. Because you just gave me the perfect segue. Um, so, you teased earlier that I actually was prepared. I brought something. And um, it's an article I found today that was published yesterday in The Observer. Okay. All right. Uh, that article is, the title of it is, well, you saw it already. Would you like to read the title? I didn't actually read it. I just saw it. The Vatican S- Sure. Well, we'll talk about that later. As soon as I can figure out how to plug this microphone back in. Same problem, over and over again. All right, I always have trouble plugging the holes. Um, <laughs> it's true, I'm Irish, what do you want? Uh, so there we go. I can't do it. Um, you can do it. 
Please, Paul, explain podcasting to her. Um, the, the, the short and fast answer, internet radio. Okay. Like, is it like each specific, like, do you have a specific topic? You have to turn that mic to her, please. I see. I see. Uh, like, do you like geeky things? You gotta talk into it, honey. Um, <laughs> there you go. That works yeah, better. Basically, the idea behind our show is what gets you geeked. It's not necessarily geeky stuff, but geek can also mean to be excited. Yeah. So what gets you excited? Now, our tastes do tend to gear toward geeky things, okay. but we also like a lot of other things. How did you feel when you heard that Lord of the Rings is coming to Netflix? All three of them. I've already seen the Lord of the Rings, so... Oh do, you, oh, do you mean the, the, the TV show? They're doing a TV series. Yeah. What? They're doing a TV series on what? Amazon Prime based on Lord of the Rings. All right. I'm a, I like, needed to get Amazon Prime because of Mr. Robot, but now I need to get it for Lord of the Rings, too. Yeah, they're, they're doing it. They haven't They haven't said it. It does tie into the movies, but they haven't said it doesn't. They're being very nebulous about okay. this. Uh, so we're not sure if it's a complete retelling or if it's just something that happens within the, the scope of that universe. Uh, but it's it's going to be a big budget production. It's probably probably going to film in New Zealand, and Peter Jackson, who directed the first three movies and the Hobbit movies, has been a, uh, what's the word? Uh, Executive producer? Yeah, well, not, not really producer. He, they, he, he spent, uh, when you... Did he influence it? He, when, when somebody hires you to tell them, give them advice about stuff. Um, not a contractor, what is that? Uh, it's that made-up job that doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, and I don't have the word either. Um... um Shit! No, oh, I'm sorry. Can I? No, no, that's oh, perfectly okay. fine. You um, can drop the F bomb if you want. Go ahead. Do it. Fuck. No, you can say it louder. No, 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 no. No, that made it even hotter that she whispered it. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeding the delegate. Is it my thing? Right. Um, consultant. That's what it is. Yes, consultant. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking. Like you said, fake job. Yeah, yeah. fake job. Fake so. job. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm like cliche geeky. Like, That's okay, Lord of the Rings, that. Doctor Who, Star Wars. Like, I'm pretty cliche. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Time out. Because I wouldn't call Doctor Who cliche. It's so cliche, and I love it. You know, see, that's funny because I am old school Doctor Who fan. I am big Finnish audios during the years it wasn't on TV. Mm-hmm. And I love the current series, and I enjoy it with my kids. Um, it wasn't cliche. It is, she's right. It kind of is now. It's so like mainstream now. Tell me I ruined it. Yeah, but, like, it also it made now. it better. On the 50th anniversary, though, I got, like, 900,000 posts on, like, w- notes on, like, one post during the whole, like, episode. And, yeah. like, I felt I felt pretty cool for, like, five minutes. <laughs> and then I realized that none of them were following me. They didn't care about anything else I had to say. They just thought I was funny for, like, two seconds. Being Welcome funny to our world. Yeah, being funny for two seconds is what we strive for. Yeah. I mean, I try to be funny all the time, but... Can't, can't so 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 what's your story? What do you do? Oh, <laughs> I'm uh, spotlight. She does not want to tell you. Yeah. I am. It's it's two polar opposites. I have two jobs. Okay. Um, I'm a nanny. Outstanding. I'm a nanny, but then the polar opposite is I'm also a cam girl. So. Like, Those are polar opposites. They are complete yeah. polar opposites. <laughs> Um, I guess the cam thing is kind of like part time when I feel I'm bored. I get bored and then I do it. I don't have like a schedule like a lot of the girls who take it super seriously. Like yeah, I should, but I don't. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm a nanny for a two year old autistic boy. Uh-huh. Who it's it's every other day. Like one day he loves me and I'm his favorite person in the world. The next day you're not my mom, so I hate you and I'm gonna punch you in the face. It's like. It's, I've been headbutted and punched in the face by a two-year-old more times than I'd like to like, count in the last week. Wow, the last week. That's rough. Yeah. Well, I love him. He's so... He's just like... Hi. <laughs> I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It's more guys. She just sat down, but that's what the mic's for. Yeah. You know, it's, that's it's, why it's here. It's interesting. Our listeners will be like, oh, this isn't the same stuff. So. Yeah, right. so uh, self-like promo, Molly Makeout, MFC, hit me up from Ever Online, which is maybe three times a month, because I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's a more regular schedule than we have. So that's literally how it goes. I get, I get super drunk, and then I go home, and I'm bored, and I'm like, I... I was gonna say that, that's the sound of keyboards. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. No, like nails are the best for like ASMR. Like, 
They yeah. really are. That's great. Um, yeah. I am 24. I am living my best life. Exactly. I guess. That's all you can do. It. Yeah, I try. That's all I can do is try. Um, I'm. I really want to photobomb them. Do it. Do it. I'm too fat and slow. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's a lot of things I, I want to do, but I realize. Please do. How often do you guys do the thing? What, like, see, what are like the breakdown? Why do podcasts actually work? How often do you do it? Like, what's, what's the thing? She wants to know about our thing. What? She, she wants to know about our thing. <laughs> hey, I'm saying, once you said you were a cam girl, all bets are off. Like, I'm going to use all of the naughty jokes. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Dude, podcasting is not consent. <laughs> that is not what you said in Saratoga. <laughs> okay. Are you guys based out of Saratoga? No, we just went to a convention in Saratoga once okay. and did Two years ago. Two years ago. We mil- just went two years ago. Yeah, it's the milk on that joke. Yeah. So here's the way it works. Uh, we record, general, the way it's supposed to work, we record, episode goes out that week. It hits iTunes. On what platform? Okay. I'm answering before I've even answered. Okay. okay. And, uh, you know, that's where people listen to. Now, we have been kind of out of the loop for about a, close to a year now. Well, more than a year. Yes, because... <laughs> it, it, it basically, this is so the short story, something happened. He needed to take a break. I took over and did a solo thing for a while. And after 40 episodes of trying to uh, do that, I got burnt out. Don't, okay. don't be modest either. What you did was fucking brilliant. That's your hype, man. I love it. Thank you. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Yeah, he had to stop for a while. And I, I just, I, I, I wanted to keep the brand alive. Yeah. Um, I just, I, they had to stop because it was taking too much out of the rest of my life. And so since yeah, that was, I did a, the last thing I did was twelve episodes leading up to the twelve. It was the twelve pods of Christmas. So I did a oh. podcast every day for twelve days straight. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, I'm, I'm done. And so after that, you know, yeah. we kind of took like a break. That. And we've just now, as of two weeks ago, we did uh, the Syracon. And we sat down with uh, Brian Johnson and Mike Zapchick of uh, Comic Book Men. Okay. And they did like an hour and how long was it? They took over the show. Yeah, they took I'm over the show. Lie. And basically, we're like, we're kind of relaunching. So, I mean, if you look back, you'll see episodes bi weekly for the past couple years until Christmas of last year. Okay. Things slowed down. But we're still getting back in the saddle. We're basically planning a relaunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just seems like we're planning a big good. relaunch for January. Okay. Right, right, that's that's the plan. January. Do you guys? Do you guys? Do you know what Webtoons is? Everybody knows what Webtoons is, but like Webtoons. Webtoons, yeah. It was like an it was a website for a while, I guess. I never knew it as a website. I now only know it as an app. Okay. But there's this like it's like you just you draw comics and then you upload them. And I'm really obsessed, like super super obsessed with this one. It's called Lore Olympus, and it focuses on like. <laughs> It focuses on um, Hades and Persephone, but it's not doing the whole like Stockholm syndrome thing. That's where my brain went when you said comics. But yeah, you should check it out. Actually, I want to show you. I don't have Wi-Fi. I can't. Yeah, um, there's nothing, nothing works down, down here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's like the artist. Like, I don't. I don't know if the artist will ever hear this, but if you are the artist for Laura Olympus on Webtoons. You make my entire life complete, and I love you. Like, it's it's so good, and like they draw Persephone as kind of like this like chubby, thick girl who's like super naive, like as a maiden would be, yeah. obviously. But I just love it, and it's great. And they need to upload more than once on Sundays. <laughs> Maybe do Sundays and Mondays through Sundays. We always want more of the media we like to binge on. Yeah. Yeah, like I try to like not think about it for a few weeks because then I have like two or three episodes that I can read. Damn you, content creators! Create more faster. I want more. Yeah. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> That's You're the one who took a break. Have you ever noticed they come out with these seasons and then they don't say anything until 
To the mic. To yeah, there's a, there's a microphone. It's like Netflix. You ever notice they come out with these seasons, right? And then you get addicted to it. And then you don't know when the next one's coming out until like two weeks before. You wanna, that's you know on when, purpose. You want to know when? It's when the show's on air on TV. That's when the next season comes out. Well, but they have like Big Mouth and stuff like that. that they do the, the reason that Netflix doesn't announce that stuff is they actually, they don't want schedules to impact quality of the shows so they give the shows as much time as they need to film and get done that's and then, smart and then they don't say anything until they're ready generally. but then look at Rick and Morty yeah, yeah but you know, there's, there's, there's reasons that we there's been such a way they finished the contract negotiations and now we're going to get what yeah. was it 70 more episodes yeah oh I can't wait yeah. I mean I love I love Rick and Morty like sitting down and watching Rick and Morty I love it but then like if I see somebody I used to work at Spencer's as well like I should say that like I'm kind of Rick and Morty like, out like, oh you would be like like imagery wise like when I see like a, a graphic tee with like Rick and Morty and all that and I'm just like can you just get away from me just you know get what away from me. you you need to step away from the imagery and remember the message yes remember what Rick tells us yeah. Nothing matters. That's Nobody is us. here for a reason. Nobody is born on purpose. That's just not wrong. I'm totally right about that. Absolutely right about that. Oh, did you ever see the, the? There's like this YouTube video. It's like the most like basic like Windows Media Maker creation of. It's it's like a little sketch, and it's a mix of Rick and Morty and Back to the Future. And I guess that's what Rick and Morty was based on. Yeah. Yeah. Totally off what somebody told me. It's so, it's so I can't find it. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it. On the, at least the original short that Rick and Morty was based on was um, a Doc and, and something else. And uh, Marty. Ja, Marty, Doc and Marty. And basically the whole thing was Doc trying to get Marty to like blow him to save the yeah. timeline. And the only reason I haven't watched it is I don't want that to color my opinion of Rick and Morty yeah. because I mean that, that's a little much like if Rick was trying to get Morty to blow that's, that would that's I'll be off little incestuous. Yeah. and, and is, is bad and, or wrong a character as Rick can be he isn't a, a pedophile yeah no so, or incestuous alright hold on pause for more ASMR that's just the best thing we're doing I don't know why I don't know why it really is <laughs> yeah. Actually, us poor guys, I just looked over there and saw your fake, I think your fake skeleton dick sitting at the table. Finally, I, 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 I just so started giggling at this for the last fucking 20 minutes. You <laughs> could watch Wes <laughs> Dick for you were, minutes. You were, yes. I did not know that about you, Paul. Like you said we were having a, a, like a serious discussion earlier. I'm over here geeking. I couldn't, like, because he's walking around with his fucking skeleton dick just bobbing everywhere. And I, couldn't, you, I couldn't okay. keep it together. So, like, I $10 for like a psychic thing. Fucking $10 for a psychic thing. Let's put it in the state fair. Like, stop complaining. Um, like, I worked so hard to make this wig look real. Like, oh, that's a wig? Holy shit, it's a wig. Yes, that's a Oh my god. My heart is warm. Like, I love it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a wig. Wow. I was just saying, I was just saying, I thought you didn't know your roots. I thought you didn't know your roots. I I mean, why wouldn't you? That's. I'm saying that's not my thing, but I mean that's fucking brilliant. To paint the picture, it's a skeleton costume with a dick. You gotta, that's, that's awesome. Everybody tells me I gotta go to the Here, Here's the People thing. make me nervous. This is what I want you to do right now. Josh Grouse and I from K-Rocks right there. I rub it up against him. Go poke him with your dick. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, oh, <laughs> He's not even. Uh, he's used to it. That's, <laughs> uh, he's a bumblebee. He was pulling on it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Okay, this guy's bacon. Like really he's walking around bacon. He, I love it. What is this? Is that a beer? Are you drinking? What are you drinking? We're drinking beer. 1911. I'm drinking gin with ginger, like, hi dad, I got this drink from you, but, like, that's the only thing that I just you just, excuse me sir, you need consent to take a picture of his skeleton dick. Here. Yep. The show's going there right now. Um, 
you, he was busying himself uh, taking a picture of a skeleton dick, just, just so somebody knows what's going on right here. And, uh, and I mean, there's nothing better than the shit eating grin on your face right now, sir. I just gonna say. I can't help it. No, I don't blame you because, right? right? I mean. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so Amazon describes it as a skeleton. Wow. It's a, it's a cliche skeleton. Yeah, there's a lot of yelling going on. Paired with, like, a biker there might be skeleton prostitute. Because, no. like, would I be a millennial if I didn't go slutty for all of it? I don't think I would. That, that, that's not a millennial thing. Yeah, thing, all this this is, I, I know a few guys do. I tried it, but like I said, I, I have totally never been able to pull off slutty. I'm trying to figure out your costume. It's like vampire-y, but you don't have things, so no. did you really commit? He's Papa 830. Papa 830? That's earlier in the show, so. Oh, okay. Um, no, I just went with, um, what, what did I call it? Uh, you called it, um, gothic. Classic. Oh, you have a mask? Oh, you already had that on. I'm dumb. Oh, it's like it's also skeleton wise. Skeleton. Hey guys, thanks for putting up with me. Oh, not at all. Putting up with you, I'm ready to invite her to be a co-host from now on. Oh, hell yeah, I'm down. Where are you guys based? Liverpool. But trust me, that would cause some problems. I just do like shameless like promos like every time. Molly like, make out on myfreecams.com. Hit me up whenever I'm online, which isn't guaranteed. I, I, I'm just saying that if she walks in, there's gonna be questions. <laughs> we record out of my basement, typically. I live in a basement. She just keeps getting weirder. I'm just saying. I'm the the deader the better. Yeah, I kinda, I'm kind of down with that. I've been in the basement once, too. I blocked out all the windows, brought some black there's, lights. It was fucking no, awesome. There's no windows, so there's no concept of time whatsoever. The other day, I woke up at 7.15 p.m. There you go. It was great. But I actually I think my psychic is free, so I'm going to go cry. There you go. Every time I read, like, get a psychic reading, I cry. Okay. Well, enjoy your crying. It was nice meeting you. Oh, it was so enjoyable. Wait, really nice did we get her name? No. Are you I got my cam name. You didn't get my real name. I think she said it's Well, because I told you my cam name, I can't say it into the microphone. Like the wall. Okay. Okay. Alright, have a good night, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. That was an interesting detour. I'll allow it. What? I'll allow it. Okay, I think it's time to take a break. Uh, yeah, way too fucking loud. And on that note, no, I'm just kidding. The episode still isn't over. Deal with it. Burr? Oh, good grief. We're back. Burr? 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 <laughs> anyway. Uh, wow, we, we keep getting sidetracked. And it's like, you know, we're trying to talk about things, but cool people keep showing up. Right. And then talking to us off mic, too. Yes, because that went on for a while. Yeah, it did, but you know what? I, 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 I'm not sure if everybody got uh, exactly what that was. But I'm sure they didn't because they got really loud. Yeah, well, the, the, the crowd did get loud, but we were basically talking to a cam girl from MFC. That's myfreecams.com. I'm glad you knew that because I didn't know what she was talking about. I had to look it up. Oh, okay. Okay, good. But, uh, you know, cool check. She was talking about, you know... Uh, some geeky stuff. Molly, uh, right? Yeah, Mo- we said we would, we would plug her. It's Molly Makeout. Oh, 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 Molly we, Makeout. We would plug her. All right. <laughs> um, I really thought that was her hair. I was like, wow, she needs a better dye job because she had dark roots. Yeah. Come to find out. Who knew? It was a fucking wig. Yeah, really. I, I tried to get a good picture, but I, my phone was not cooperating with me. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to post Same thing happens to me all the time. It's our age, dude. It's our, our age is why our phones don't work? Yeah, things don't work anymore. I get you. With our phones. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Not... Anyway, uh, where were we when this... Oh, we were talking about the CW's new season. You were saying how you're not caught up. Completely. Not completely caught up, but that's not exactly what we were going into. What um, were we going those into? who are listening will remember, because it was just a few minutes ago, that I was about to talk about our WTF file. Oh, you file. were. You were. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and it was all because you had mentioned Pokemon Go and Ghostbusters World. Yep. Jurassic, whatever the fuck it's called. No, I didn't bring that up. I brought no, but up. it's all the same idea of games. These are GPS games where you have to run around and grab shit. The GPS games, yes. 
Jeepus games. I like that. Jeepus. We should trademark that. I think it's already been done, but okay. Go for it. So, there's a new one that okay. is only available in, in Spain and Rome, I believe, right now. And um, it was, uh, it, it, it's been developed by a group called... <clears throat> Hold on. I almost not Dude, put your glasses on, old man. I don't use glasses yet. Come on, right. Papa, 8.30, read it. Read the paper closer <laughs> to your 45. eyes. Papa, 7.45? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was developed by a group that for $500,000 took two years and 32,000 hours to develop. The group is called Fundacion Ramon Pañe. Okay. okay. Um, and, and they rolled it off for World Youth Day. Okay. This is a game in the vein of Pokemon Go called, and I shit you not, I wish I could make this up, Follow JC Go. Okay, please keep reading. Um, the article for this, this, this uh, news item that I have here is titled, The Vatican's New Game Let's Players Catch Jesus. The rarest Pokemon of all. <laughs> I'm giving you a second. Go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty, but basically it's Pokemon Go for Christians. Um, what you, would Ash do? <laughs> who's Ash? Is the he main the, character from Pokemon? See, I don't know Pokemon. Neither do I, but I know that. Okay. Um... For some reason, I think of Jack when you say that. You know what? I was actually going to reference Jack earlier. I kind of miss him. Me yeah. too. I was in the process when we were starting to think about the relaunch of uh, reaching out to him and giving him his own show. Okay, can we relaunch ours first? And That's then the maybe, plan. Yeah. But I would love to have him back. I do actually miss him. I do, because he's so fucking weird. He added a good comedic element when he was on point. That he did. Well, we could rein him in. Yes. Um, so anyway, uh, JC Go, we're going to call this. Okay. Um, or as I like to call it, Pope Come on, Go. <laughs> I did come up with that on my own. Thank you. I'm going to pat myself. Um, so you, you go around... And this is only available in, like I said, Spain and Rome, I believe. Oh, shit. I didn't come up with Pokemon Go. It's on here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it is available for iOS and Android. Um, the geographical reach is limited. It's only active in Italy and Spain at the moment. Which means that you can go to the Vatican and, uh, and find your... Uh, your saints and your apostles and all that. Because that's the thing is you, you collect all of these um, fictitious people from the Bible. I am putting my slant on that. I'm sorry. That's pretty much the whole Bible, right? All the fictitious people? Yes. The, the, the fictitious part, yeah. Yes. I agree. Okay, I was going to say, someone's playing the fucking piano over there. Yeah, someone's been playing the piano for a few minutes. Yeah, I caught it. I was hoping I was, you know, in a beer haze. I'm not? No, you're not. There's someone playing the piano. I might go over there and play the piano when they're done. You can play the piano? A little bit. I mean, I can mash the keys. Does that count? Uh, not if you're not playing a song. Okay. Um, so anyway, yes. Pokemon Go with um, Apostles. And once you have your group of Apostles, um, you're like a team and you can go find Jesus. I shouldn't be surprised by this. I'm not surprised. You know, this follows... Uh, actually, if you look at gaming history, this this is completely normal. Uh, go back to the Nintendo Entertainment uh, years, and after Super Mario was Noah's Ark. There was actually a company that was created and did nothing but put out biblical Nintendo games. Are you serious? Oh, uh, no, dead serious. And uh, it's, it's common because, you know, the... Religions are always looking for new ways to reach people. 
So they look at what's popular and they copy it. That's what they've always done. I mean, it, it, their own religion is copied. It's copied from paganism. It's it's copied from older rituals and older ideas. I, I mean, if if you look. This is going to piss people off. If you look oh, at the Bible, do. the entire concept of Adam and Eve and all the stuff in the Bible is all drawn from older religions. Okay, they're the same stories that the same stories told over and over again. Right, and uh, we see it now. You know, we saw it back in the Nintendo with the Nintendo religious games. We're seeing it now with they're riffing off Pokemon. They're always late to the party. Right, because they, they, they take advantage of whatever the hot thing was two years ago. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and, and as somebody who was raised in a religious family, uh, and luckily was able to escape from it and you know create their own critical reasoning, uh, we had the same thing. I was playing with He-Man and Masters of the Universe, and they tried to shove fucking Noah action figures on me. You know, they, they have whole stores, you know, Christian rock and Christian action figures, and all this stuff they try to shove on you. To replace, you know, the the, the secular things, I guess. Um, it's they're doing what they've always done, and I, I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. I mean, th- I think it's a bad thing because I think organized religion is evil. It's but, a bunch of bullshit. Yes. No, I think it's evil. It's not bullshit. Bullshit is the stuff that w- what we usually hear from like con- or like strong conservatives or strong, you know, liberals, like the really dangerous stuff. That's bullshit. The stuff that has, like, for instance. Uh, in the past few days, there's been a bunch of bombs mailed to a bunch of, uh, you know, Democratic people. Yes. Uh, before they had caught the person and discovered that he had Trump stickers all over his car. Everywhere. Yeah. They were saying, oh, uh, My God. maybe this is a false flag. And, you know, somebody, it was some comedian uh, said, I'm trying to imagine, you know, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, and all those other people in a basement hashing a plot to send themselves pipe bombs. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um... No, that wasn't a comedian. It was Jeff Watkins. Jeff Watkins said that. Jeff, the Jeff Watkins. The Watkins. The Watkins said that. And, and yeah, it was... DJ com- Stay Gold himself. <laughs> completely ridiculous. Um, it is. It's nonsense. And, and that's that's kind of how I feel about um, most of religion. It's, it's completely ridiculous when you apply critical reasoning. Kind of like the uh, opening text from Dogma. You have that memorized because you would suck Kevin Smith's dick if you could. I don't. Without a doubt. But probably yes. Came close. I, I almost offered Brian Johnson. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You, I, thought, I thought he might hit me. So, so, so you're, you're actually sliding down to his cohorts? It's not just the man himself? You do realize what Brian Johnson means to me, right? Like you, with, do, you do realize I had a whole sucking his dick joke that I was going to throw out there but didn't because I wasn't sure it was appropriate. <laughs> Can we back up so you can throw that joke out there? No, we really can't because I. it was something I thought of while we were in the moment. And I was like, you know what? It's I too didn't, much. I didn't want him to look at you and think of you as too much of a fanboy and not take us seriously. So you're saying I have to cut this out? Cut what we're saying out? Yes. No, we never do that. <laughs> no, because that means I would have to edit. Yeah, and you don't edit. You don't even release or shows. Why would you fucking yes. edit? <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, it's, it's a little scary because they really do. They try to brainwash children by giving them analogs. I look at it like, you know, we say my, my vape is an analog to a, a conventional cigarette. That's what religions do. They give the kids analogs to what's popular in culture to try to sway them away from that, to try to keep them in their grip. And it's fucking scary. It is. And I saw it firsthand. And I think we discussed it on one of the few episodes that came out from us. I don't know if you've just d- discussed. I mean, I don't know what experience you've had. Um, I'm talking about how last summer, and I hope this doesn't offend the friends of the show that were involved in it. But last summer, for a week, the kids went to Bible camp. I would never let my kid go to Bible camp. We didn't know that's what it was at the time. How do you not know it's Bible camp? Because we were deceived on what it was. Okay. Um, and I don't mean that maliciously. Even though once we got there, I was really not having. This is how I ended up getting my PS4. Oh really? Yes. Um, friends of the show, 
who may do some Star Wars costuming. Okay. Um, as a stormtrooper. Don't get too specific. That that's yeah. I'm leaving it at that. I'm just trying to make sure that they know it's not Alex. Get on with the story, Paul. <laughs> um, they said, you know, look, we have this summer camp for a week. Bring the kids. It's not religious in any way. It's just good times every night for a week. Well, you get there and it's all about, you know, it, it takes place way back when. And you visit the, the houses of uh, Mary and yada yada and yeah, the whole yeah. thing. They had a blast. Kids had a great time. Sure they did. Day two, Kristen realized what it was because the first night we pissed them. Not pissed. Picked them up. Uh, they're telling us all about God and all of this stuff and Kristen knew I was really angry so she went up on me a PS4 <laughs> okay um, yeah it was, it was shut up money basically and uh, it went on that way for a week you know they, they went and did all their, their activities but while they're doing the activities they, they would sing songs and everything was Christian bent and you know everything took place in Nazareth I'm, I'm doing air quotes and they would go and visit with you know the Virgin Mary and everybody else and they would sing their songs at the end about how great God was and all this and I was just like you know this was not what was advertised and I was a little irritated and needless to say um, when we were asked we did not bring the kids back in the summer this past summer so Dude, I would have probably um, gotten arrested. I didn't go that far. Wanted no. to, didn't. I mean, that, that's where we might be a little different. I am, and, and and my wife actually differs. I mean, she's like, well, if the kids decide they they want to follow it, you should let them. And I'm all for them exploring the ideas. But if one of my kids actually decides, and I'm going to be a Christian, my wife and I will actually probably have one of our, our biggest fights because um, organized religion is dangerous. I agree. It, it, it promotes abuse. It promotes um, non-education. It, it, the idea is to keep people ignorant so they follow the rules you set so that you make more money or you get more ass. That's about as blunt as I can put it. And I I am not against the idea that if more proof is shown to me that there is a God, I will explore it. But I don't trust a single fucking human being on the face of this planet that says they know more, more than I do. Because In that they, respect? Yeah, they don't have more proof than I do. Right. But they always have an agenda. Everyone has an agenda. Yeah, yeah, I have an agenda. Right. I want to make this podcast great. I mean, I'm a cool guy, but I want to make this podcast great. I got that. Yeah, we, we asked for that cam girl's information so we can promote her so hopefully people will listen to our podcast. We absolutely have an agenda, but it's not an evil agenda. It's not right. a bad agenda. We're, we're not hurting <clears throat> people. Organized religion hurts people. It keeps them, it keeps them stupid. Keeps it keeps them, so them complacent. And while yes, is there some male fantasy where there's the idea of a wife that's complacent and does what you want? Would that be great? Yeah, that would be great for about for, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I would say maybe two weeks. I could go a little longer. It'd be fun for about two weeks, and then I would get really fucking bored. Right. It's an awful thing, and. You're doing what you should. You're doing the right thing, which is resisting it passively. Um, I am probably going to resist it more aggressively the older I get. Because the older I get, the angrier I get about how much time I spent in that fucking Wesleyan church. In Rickard, I think it was. Rickard, New York. Having bullshit shoved into my brain. Every time we went to Utica and... We always hit the Christian bookstore before we hit the comic store. I was actually getting both things at the same time. I was listening to Petra, which is a Christian band, with a lot of actually talented musicians. They had some really good songs. 
Songs that made you feel guilty and want to give money to the church. But they were good songs. Um, but I was also buying Doctor Who comics at the same time. <laughs> Thank God. You know, I didn't, I didn't have any other influences. I didn't have anyone to pull me out of that. I did it myself. But I look at other people who maybe... I don't want to say I'm, I'm incredibly intelligent. I think you probably would say I'm incredibly intelligent. That's why you call me Dr. Hugh. Who would say that? Me? Yeah, you would. Let's say I. I consider myself lucky that I pulled myself out of that with no help. Because there are smarter people than me who haven't. Who have been hooked in. The people that make the good arguments, the ones that hook our kids, those are smart people right. that got suckered. You, you got to remember, it's 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 a war, it really is, and the people on the other side are not dumb. It's not it's right. not like when we talk, you know, left versus right. You can make an argument. There's a, there's a lot of people on the right that are dumb. <laughs> I mean, because we have West Virginia. Okay, <laughs> it exists. It's actually on the fucking map. That's a fact. In this in this war, there in. Just people just as smart as everyone else on the other side. And it's been a war that's been waging as long as man has existed. Agreed. And and what it is, it's a war against reason, a war against knowledge, and a war against independence. And I think that's one of the most dangerous things. I'm not happy with the way our world and our country is going right now, but I am more scared about the religious ramifications. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, this just got way deep, and I probably just gave away a lot more than I generally would. <laughs> well, it's too late now because I'm not cutting any of that out. No, we're not. We're not cutting anything out. No, but I, well, I think people know. Yeah, I think we've made it clear where we stand on religion. Before. I've just never made it quite this clear. And quite so angry. I well, like well, well, you, you know, you like me angry. I it make that pretty hard. What? What did you say? Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> did you say? You actually said what I think. It made my puppy say, huh? Oh, okay, okay. That's what I thought you said. Um, well, no, I, because I, I have the same thing. Avery comes home and she's like, she starts talking about God because one of her friends is religious. And, and, and now she's finally let it go, but for a good six months, she was like, why don't you guys believe in God? And I'm like, I want to tell her. My wife's like, no. Because she doesn't want to stymie her. And I'm like, no. I, I mean, I want her to make her own informed decision, but then I also want to tell her when she's wrong. And, and that's where we're different. My wife believes in, you know, well, you have to let her make her own decision. But I 100% believe. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, that this is a bad thing. And I can't disagree with your wife because you can you, you have to let them make their own decision. No, but I don't. Also, at, at the age she's at, she's not going to make a reasoned decision. At 22, she'll still be too stupid to make a decent decision. Okay. No. <laughs> Actually, can can we hit pause on this? Because I would like to go make an appointment with Debbie. That costs money, though. We can, we can deal with it. All right, you're going to try to make this work? I'm going to make this work. All right, and we're going to pause now for, what, our third ad break? Yeah, third ad break. All right. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> okay, that, that was great. Okay, we're about to do something. Uh, well, not about to. We're hoping to be. No, 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 we're going to do something because I offered money. It's going to happen. So here's the deal. Uh, so I, I talked to her earlier. Actually, I think I said the name wrong, but it's Maggie the Psychic. She was really nice to me and uh, nice to both of us and gave us food. And uh, I went up to the people who are scheduling her, and I'm really hoping she'll sit down with us for free, but I'm willing to spend $10 for 10 minutes. And the reason for that is, very simply, um, I am a skeptic at heart, but I'm a skeptic who wants to ghost hunt. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't want to ghost hunt because I'm a right. skeptic. And we didn't get to catch up with Josh on that. No, we haven't yet. Hopefully, we will. Right. Uh, We're running out of time. It's. I, I want to believe. Well, actually, midnight? I think it might actually happen afterwards. Because jo- Josh is contractually obligated to run this shit until midnight. He might not be able to do that until afterwards. Anyway, we'll talk about it later. Um, so, you know, I want to believe in this stuff, but I have reasons not to. So I, I have a, a friend, and I don't think she listens, and if she does, you know, I hope you'll forgive me for what I'm about to say. Um, somebody I've known since high school, somebody who is still a psychic and holistic healer and all that stuff, and 
all throughout you know knowing her you know she you know, we dated for a little while we've always been friends but she always thought she could do things she thought she could feel things she thought she could heal things I actually let her her and her boyfriend sit over me and put their hands on my knees back when I was having really bad knee problems and they were gonna heal me and did it work no it didn't work. okay I just wanted to establish that no and and here's the thing I've I've wanted to believe in that stuff because I love horror and the supernatural but what I think it is is people that want to feel like they're special Oops. who aren't no not groups no, rubes. Roop? No, 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 not rubes. I think it's... Okay, we all want to be special in this world. We all want to stand out. You and I have a podcast. That's something we can say. We hey, think we're we, special. Yeah, we think we're special. Um, there are people who want to feel special, so they create this reality around themselves where they can see things that other people can't. They can sense things that other people can't. And... If, if somebody's talking to you about a problem, it's not hard to give advice. Paul, in fact, all the shit you've talked to me about... I off want, mic. Yeah. Off mic. <laughs> I 100% could have given you psychic advice because I, I've studied Penn and Teller. I've studied uh, P.T. Barnum. Penn and Teller. After you asked any or before? Both. Okay. I, I have always studied this kind of stuff. And... The, the truth is, I, I want to be proved wrong in this situation. I want to be proved that people can be psychic. Not everybody is psychic. Not every psychic is psychic. Of course, no. that's not true. Charlotte but I, I want to be proved wrong. I want to believe that there are people out there that can actually do this. Not because I want to believe people are special. Not because I want people that want to be special to be right. But because I want there to be a little bit more to this world than I know. Than what we have to deal with. They, there are more things under under this earth that are dreamed of in your reality, or whatever the however the saying goes. Yes, I want there to be more. I've never seen anything that makes me believe that. So I would like to have somebody on. You want Maggie to change your perspective? I do. And I hope she can. So we're we're gonna see. I hope. Hopefully. So let, let's take a pause here and let's see what happens. And tell me about what my life. What if I bomb? See if you close your energy, I'm not going to get much. Well, well no, I, I, I'm a skeptic in that I looked at, look at things scientifically, but I want this to be true. I want to find somebody who... I really want to find somebody who really is a psychic, so I'm open to it. Yeah, yeah, he turned, he turned the mic on. I wanted to prepare her, dude. I figured she was already prepared, and we were rolling into it. Okay, you know what? Because, have, you know what? Nothing we're saying is false advertising. You're right. I am going to have myself completely open to you, so please, do your thing. Okay. Can, can you introduce her, at least? This is Maggie the Psychic. I actually already read all the stuff on your card, but please go ahead and tell people where they can find you. What's your name? My name is Hugh. Hugh? That's correct. Okay, this is Hugh the Psychic, in case I get anything wrong. <laughs> I'm Hugh the Psychic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, so, okay, my name is Maggie Hart, and um, and I do, I, I do what we call intuitive guidance. I don't really call them ratings. I don't use any tools. Sorry, we're throwing her off. I'm moving the mics around. It's my fault. This is totally a setup. You're throwing me off. I, I swear that we are not. <laughs> no, we're not. But I, no, am, I, I am going to narr- narrate it a, little, a little bit since I'm not involved in it. Um, they both have mics in front of them. They are now. She just took his hand. Yeah, but I'm not getting fresh. He's married. Oh, I wasn't even it's going not there. Even, it's oh, not okay. even a fresh kind of handhold. Even if I wasn't married, I wouldn't think something of it. So I, I, I shouldn't say the fact that you just put her on top of the table. And, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Stop. Wow. I'm this a is douche. a rough That's crowd over here. No, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a step back. Dude, this thing's now going an extra hour. Let her get on with her shit so she can go back to her table and make more money. <laughs> All right, like I said, I got... on your podcast? Ooh. Yeah, we can I say whatever we want. I can't mine. Okay. Yeah, fuck. I'm just wow, I'm um, so in trouble. No, we're all right. We're not. A, we're not. not we're network. independent. We See, are. you gotta tell, teach me this magic. We, we'll oh. talk later. Yeah, we will. Okay. All right, but I'm gonna take a step back to you guys. Am I going? You're going. Okay, so this is Hugh the psychic, right? Okay. 
and no, I do. Um, I do intuitive guidance. I don't. I don't call them readings, and I don't use any tools. Okay, so it's you and me, and I just feel the energy and. Okay. okay. And then tell me what you feel. Okay. You've had some issues with your health, but I don't think it's been anything major. Well, that's good news. Mm -hmm. I feel like you need to watch your cholesterol. We're going to talk about health. You were in a car accident before? Not anything major. Mm -hmm. okay. I feel issues with cars. You having a lot of car trouble lately, or have you been? A lot of issues with vehicles. That's what I feel around. In, in, in the past, but interestingly enough, I've never driven. I've been in a many car accidents where I wasn't driving. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, even driving into a house. Okay. It wasn't. No, it, it's, it's, it's my luck. Okay. So what would you like to know? Ask me a question. Oh, I wasn't prepared for that. I thought you would... Do you want me to? Do you want me to just... Yes, because I, I, don't, I don't have questions. So. I, I want to know what you feel or what you think. Okay. So I totally can sense the fact that... I, I get that you're a science guy. A lot of people are science guys. Um, you tell me that you're not going to block your energy, but I feel like there's a reservation there. Okay. Um... Hold on, yeah, you have a lot of curiosity that. about life. I, I, I feel that you're curious. I feel, I, here's what I feel. You have a lot of different interests. And um, I feel that they're very diverse. Yes, I get the fact that you tell me you're, you're interested in the supernatural, but I feel like you have a lot of diverse interests. It's not, you can't really pigeonhole what you like, I don't feel. And I feel like when you, when you get... When you're interested in a subject, you put your teeth into it, and you're just like on it, like a dog. Okay, so, um, so if you're interested in a topic, in a topic, um, I feel like you will research as much as you can about it, and just spend, you know, you can become easily immersed in that topic for a long period of time. Okay. You're enjoying moving my beer around. Can yeah. I ask why? Because, I mean, you guys all have beer. I don't have anything over here. That's okay. I, I, I thought it, it, it might have... I don't drink a lot. I thought it might have been because I'm very interested in brewing, and I've brewed many beers myself, so... Okay. Um, is this decent stuff? Uh, nothing they have up there is decent stuff. Ooh. Ooh, that's a slam. <laughs> okay, so getting back to you. So, would you say that was accurate? Yes. Can, can, can I ask you to go in a direction now? Okay, I thought you were going to ask me any questions, but yeah, go ahead. Well, no, no, I'm, I, I'm curious because yeah. you, you're right about me being very interested in a lot of different topics. Mm -hmm. So people usually come to psychics and ask about relationships. I'm, yeah. I'm curious as to what you think. Yeah, yeah, you're, I saw the eye roll. Because mm -hmm. um, everybody wants to know what's going to happen. And it's so hard to know what a person who is completely separated from you is going to do. That's tough. Um, what do you think? Do you do you? How do you feel about? I don't my think anything. Status? What I do is I feel um, the. What I get is the energy off of the person. What is my energy? So if you? the energy's from a person, that may direct me as to you know a loved one or a potential loved one. Okay. Okay. Um, but I feel like to be honest, a lot of people what they do in my field is um, there's what's called cold reading. Okay, yeah. so they'll um, they'll ask you a question and then very carefully study your facial expressions to try and get an answer. Okay, we were talking or, about that before you came. Okay, over, all right. Also, um, you know, based on your your replies to things that I say, obviously, if your face appears very animated, I would potentially know that I hit you know exactly. a positive point, and so I could potentially pursue that line of reasoning or that path okay um so yeah there are people out there like that um and and does free will affect a person absolutely it does so if you were to be in a relationship today and everything were good and you had a mindset today theoretically if your mindset were to change two weeks ago that would change your life path or change your direction okay so yeah there is room for 
uh, a diversity in a path that way. Um, but as a general rule, um, if you're open and I, I can feel your energy, okay, then uh, what are you wanting to know? Can I feel your wife? Can I feel her energy? Can I feel how your marital status is, status is right now? Um, what, what is, what, what's your line of questioning? What do you want to know, I guess? I, I guess my line of questioning yeah, I is like I, I want to I mean, know I what, like what, you what you know. <laughs> I feel like you Yeah, okay. I don't feel a lot of dissension in the relationship. I don't feel as though it's an unpeaceful relationship, but I feel like there's been a sense of loss in the relationship. Okay. Um, I think there have been a lot of difficult times. Um, I feel like there's a balance there. I think that you make a good pair. I might be sold. I'm impressed. So what do you think? Um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything bad on the air anyway. Because, <laughs> like, Thanks, like I said, you know, we're here to sell you. But no, no, that that's mm -hmm. with nothing. That's a, a pretty accurate description. Okay. That's what I got. So. I, I'm actually impressed. Now, I'm inclined to let her read me. I think you should. Um, this could be a train wreck. <laughs> you, you get to edit, so. All right. Why don't can you? I have and, my beer? And that's up I don't to even her. get a beer. Yeah, huh? We can get you a beer. No, I can't. I have to drive home. But thank you. I'm teasing. I just need something. To Here, drink. have this. This, this will work. Thanks. Um, so now she's reached her hand out to me, and I'm apprehensive. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I can't reach you. I have short little arms. You got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Now she's taking my hand. Okay. You guys could just start to pack up. Okay. Yeah, I trust you. Because we're pretty well done. Yeah. I guess yeah. they extended the event till one, but. That's what we heard. I'm not sure for, for sure. These guys just want me to stay. That's right. Because you're fun. And, uh, I'll take it. All right. So. <clears throat> and I'm gonna give you a little extra room. So is this gonna be like part of the landmark special or something? Oh, um, this is an extra long episode. We're actually going to call this a megasode. Oh, nice. So, and you're bringing it home, basically. Thank you. Okay, thank you, honey. All right. Yeah, she rolled up and looked angry. I thought I already did something wrong. Oh, that's just, that's her look. She's awesome. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to tell you, I, I'm very apprehensive about this. Because okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you're not relaxed, so I mean, you gotta you gotta chill out and breathe a little more, or, or that's okay. not gonna work. Okay. Focus on him, though. I I, I want to see if you can pick this up. There's something very specific with the kids. Is it okay for me to say no, that? No, go with it. Go with it. Something very specific with the kids. Let's see if you can pick it up. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but you're you're, you're so close. Okay. So specific with the children that live with you. Okay. Is one developmentally disabled? Okay, so, and, and that's an issue. And listen, you can't, they're a lot more sensitive than you give them credit for, and they understand a lot of what's going on. Okay. Um, is it autism? No. Okay. Downs? It's very rare. Okay. All right, because I feel like some of the symptoms are the same as those, though. Okay. You um, might be right. Okay. <laughs> I'm still learning. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to talk to you about that off the air, because there may be some things I can suggest that will help you. But, but listen. Um, can I jump in here? I just walked around the table and kissed her on the head. She's really close. Dig deeper. You were so close. Oh, you, what else do you want? We, we, like I said, we, we wanted to, to test this out. Okay. 
I don't think we need to test anything else. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, said, yeah. That's that, that might be enough. So, was I wrong with the developmentally disabled? No. Okay, so. What, do you want me to be more specific? I, what else were you looking for? No, you don't have to get more specific. It's. I mean, there's there okay. there was enough there. Can can we tell her on air? Uh, you yeah. Go ahead. <sighs> He has a daughter who has Alexander's disease, which is a developmental disease, and it's also fatal. Mm-hmm. So it's he is the father of a child that is going to die, which is certainly impacted him, impacted our podcast, and uh, you certainly picked part of that up. I, I was just trying to see if you could pick up the rest of it. I'm, I'm not trying to to push you. I mean, you, you hit the developmentally disabled, you know, right on the, the head. But yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that at this point there is not a cure for. Right, so <clears throat> uh, both children know how much you love them, by the way, and how dedicated that you are. Um, and, I, and you know what? You feel guilty. Don't feel guilty for spending more, more uh, time with one than the other because I feel like that bothers you sometimes um, you're doing the best that you can and you're only human and um, you got to give yourself a little bit you, you don't you beat yourself up too much and it, that's not healthy for you you have to stop that in all honesty um, does that make sense yeah okay yeah you, you got to give yourself a break buddy you're 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 beating yourself up and you're trying to take this whole situation upon yourself and my heart breaks for you quite honestly um i mean i don't know what else you want to know but um Uh, we're good we are very very good so um did I pass the test? <laughs> oh, well, we, we are not going to walk away from this experience and have anything negative to say. I uh, I might still need a little more convincing because I am the skeptic, but I am I'm quite impressed with, with what you came up with. So, okay. And that, that is... <laughs> that is a lot of credit right there because he knows how, how uh, skeptical I am. I, I mean, really, I mean, you, you pegged my relationship pretty much, you know, happy, but, you know, with some loss, and, and, and that is, you know, my my wife and I have been trying to have another child, yeah. and we've been trying for seven years. Yeah, that's difficult. And, and she to the point where she got a tattoo of the, uh, the, the secondary infertility, the little uh, dandelion, the blooms, mm-hmm. and all that. She got a tattoo of that because it's that big of a deal in our lives. So, yeah, we, we are... We are happy, but... Children can come to you in many different forms, though. Have you ever considered adoption? Because, honestly, oh, I don't... Yeah, 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 we have, yeah, but, but, but my, my family comes from... We, we adopted uh, disabled kids. My, my mom and dad did. Mm-hmm. And it was... <laughs> it's a nightmare we are still living with. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, well, that was that experience, though. It doesn't mean yours is going to be that Oh, way. yeah, and, and I'm not against it because of that. But, but I mean, my, my wife has looked at the experience that my family had with that. And yeah. She would rather not adopt if we can't have another kid. Sure. I mean, I one ab- adoption absolved and another one where you know, I my my sister has three kids now. Um, they're all in the custody of my mother, who is way too old for a two-year-old, mm-hmm. and losing her freaking mind. And mm-hmm. we won't take them because whenever she gets her shit together every once in a while yeah right social services gives the kids back to her for three months and she ruins them and Mm. and and right now my my mother who is you know 65 years old is dealing with are you okay he's still very quiet yeah yeah we're gonna go back to him okay but but yes we have considered it Mm -hmm. Uh, it, because of our experiences we wouldn't do it but all i'm saying is you know you you pegged me pretty accurately and I was in. Pro- That's why I got up. Like I said, I got up and kissed your head. I hope that wasn't like too much because I was like no, blown okay. away when he, you saw that. You know, she mm-hmm. said 
that and I was like yep okay we, we have something why would I kiss your head that's so weird that's not the kind of thing I would do I'm so sorry I was actually in rapture too I was like holy crap she's reading Paul accurately yeah, no intuitive was... guidance I don't like to call him because because okay. <laughs> everything I come so I, I apologize for that's that okay. if that was too close I was no, just actually cool. I, I actually had a moment right there so anyway so, yeah so I'm that's impressed. kind of you know I do these I I, I love you know, Josh is, is awesome, and I love working with Danielle here at the Landmark, so I've been doing this for five years, I think, here. And this is one of the few events that I have time to do anymore because I do, um, I do do uh, a lot of, I do a lot of um, humanitarian work, right, on the side. So, you know, working with uh, veterans, disabled, uh, things like that, and uh, elderly, homeless, and then uh, I um, I uh, do a lot of um, ghost clearing, house clearings, and deliverance work too. So I get rid of. What is deliverance work? Okay, so it's not the same as an exorcism, but you get yeah. rid of the. If you're into the supernatural, then you know. If you ever studied demonology, um, you know. That's what I do. I get rid of okay. the bad guys. <laughs> so. Um, uh, and then I, um, and then I have a ministry to kind of, kind of do that work too. So, and I have podcasts. I do a podcast every Sunday. Uh, but, but I've gotten into, um, more investigative journalism. So I've kind of been doing some whistleblower, whistleblower topics rather. Would you be, I don't know if this will ever happen, but would you be willing to, uh, come along on investigation type things? I mean, depending on my schedule, yeah, okay. absolutely, yeah. We're, I mean, we're we're trying to expand into that. Josh okay. is actually really interested in that. Yeah, well. I mean, I offered it. I was going to Happy Valley well, I, last year, and I I, I messaged him. I'm like, dude, I'm going to Happy Valley if you want to, because he mentioned wanting to go somewhere. I'm like, I'm going there if you want to go. You know, bring some work boots or whatever. But I grew up less than a mile from Happy Valley. Yeah. Okay. Very pretty, familiar with the place. Pretty weird energy out there. Yeah, yeah. but but you know, I mean, it seems like every ghost hunting team has um, a psychic or, or some person who is yeah. who comes along with it. Just throwing it out there. I mean, uh, Happy Valley. Um, to be honest with you, I'd like to go out there. What I did was I got to do a little bit of clearing work and getting rid of some of the evil that was out there. So <laughs> we can investigate it and then let me do my thing. That'd be cool. There's a lot of trapped energy there that needs to go there, away there's a yeah. lot of crazy shit down there yeah there is you know but i mean look where we're at i mean you know what i mean so i'm glad we have your number yeah i think we're gonna be i think i gave it to you yeah yeah i work right crazy i'm work mad hours though so you know we would need to schedule it a bit out and uh you know give and me a so week or two we. all right cool yeah. cool so back to you are you okay I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings or anything. You didn't. It's eye-opening. That's all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty accurate, though, you would say. Way too accurate. If Paul is 100% convinced. I am 50% on board. <laughs> That's cool. And, and, and willing to go the other 50%. So. You guys, this has been awesome, but my people are waiting for me to I close know. up and go home. <laughs> so, right. yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's time for us to wrap up, too. Okay. Well, thank you very much, thank Maggie. Thank you. So, yeah, Maggie Hart. Get a hold of me on... You can find her you at, at Maggie Hart 2 on Twitter. On Instagram, it's Maggie Hart one Her email is Maggie underscore Hart at Outlook.com. Her website is Maggie Hart 15 dot Wixsite dot com forward slash Maggie Hart. Her phone number, if you want to talk in person, is 315-402-0862. Paul, I think that we need to wrap things up, but I think we need a little uh, closing statement after that incredibly impactful segment. We can't just end with Megabyte Me Bitches. I I don't know what else you want me to say at this point. I, I am shaking my core. And that's not dramatics. That's not fucking around. Well then, peace out. This has been a Geek Pod Network production. 
Show notes and links to our social media can be found on our webpage, www.geekpod.com. That's G33KPOD.com. Want to help us out? Please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Reviews really help keep us on the charts. Thanks, guys, and see you next time. Mm-hmm.